as we had last left it off, the party ventured into the furthest depths of Baranzala to come across something called the Failure, an ooh-slash-construct uh, of knowledge's personal design. It was released upon your entry into a secure area, and it proceeded to destroy pretty much all the artifacts and equipment that was left around there. Tough little fight followed, but you guys were able to destroy this thing. And you also found Knowledge's little hoard, which included vast amounts of gold, components, as well as an individual book of each uh, in ability enhancement. For which you have pilfered the lot, and then utilising Verity's teleportation circle, which uh, I need you to roll a d20 on for me, please, Verity. <laughs> Um, because we, because oh. we actually all died. No, we leave a grease throw there. Leave a grease throw there, so that next time knowledge comes to a stash, he just finds this grease. Oh, really, that's our damn. <laughs> oh, what a way to start the session. Fifty nine. Oh, let's have a little look. See what we got here. Oh, you get you regain your lowest level expended spell slot, Verity. Well, that's useful. So, bet you feel powerful now. So you feel a little bit of gas within you as you're casting the cell, and you still bring up a. And that feels better. You feel a little refreshed, and with that, um, you disappear, fumbling, fumbling through the teleportation circle, eventually appearing out on the other side. So. Verity, you are aware of two teleportation circles in Brian, the one in the church and the one in uh, Wade's wonderful Emporium. Which one are you going to? Um, I would have gone where the party would have preferred. I think we caused a bit of a ruckus last time I we went straight into Wade's. So maybe maybe go to the church and, and you know, use our little legs to transport us from the church to Wade's. Yeah. Give it a roll. Okay. Okay, so you appear <laughs> in a large cathedral at the back end where the plinth and the altar is. Um, there is a small... Oh! As you turn to see a halfling priest startled by your sudden appearance um it appears to be uh quite early in the morning you've been you've been in baronzala for quite a while um it's like oh oh excuse me uh, tra travelers um well well as he sort of pauses and stares at you the air of recognition comes over his face it's like oh it's um uh, welcome to welcome to brian um, oh, you've been here before. Uh, <laughs> um, peace and blessings be upon you. Uh, have you come seeking spiritual, uh, reinforcement today? Uh, no. Sorry for startling you. Uh, this is just the, uh, easiest teleportation circle to use. But no, we, we, we just have some business in town, um, I, I, I hope I hope we didn't alert you or or, or distract no, no. you from your duties. No, no, of course it's it's quite all right. Um, you will find that the gates are closed at the moment. The fighting in the south has become too intense, and we have had to seal seal it off for our own safety. Well, hopefully we can do something about that while we're here. Uh, yes, go ahead, Verity. Um. He looks genuinely surprised. You, you don't detect you don't detect any um, alternate, ulterior, sinister uh, motions from him or, or machinations or anything like that. It's going to be like a cab driver though. He's going to be telling all the ones. You'll never guess who came through my teleportation circle today. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, with that, you bow respectfully. He bows towards you. 
And you leave the church to find yourself on the streets of Brine. And it is a little different from when you had last been here. It's um, a little bit more crowded. Um, a lot of people are currently on the streets. Um, not in squalor or anything, but they've certainly pitched up tents along here. Um, there are quite a few uh, windows that are open that you can tell. Like lots and lots of voices. More voices than you heard previously from the natural living habitat here coming uh, uh, exuberating from um a lot of the buildings that were previously not very good have been repaired and in some cases have been expanded um uh yeah it's just it's just yeah do we feel that rachel's been taking in refugees from everywhere and that's what's caused the, the increase in population yeah, these people look like they are carrying like large sacks on their back with everything they have. It looks it, you get the feeling that these probably are refugees from the said fighting to the south. Happy, happy. So, what would you guys like to do? Do you guys want to head straight for Wade's? I mean, that's the the main reason we're here, isn't it? Or is it going to be too early? Does it look like shops might be open? The shops are open. It's it's like you know, it's definitely gone off. the The sun's definitely up, but you get the feeling that people are like, "Oh, still, well, fucking Monday morning," that sort of thing. I get the impression her end's a nice early riser. Would <laughs> like we be aware if Rachel? It is Rachel, isn't it? Yes. That is an early ri- uh, riser because, like, if it seems a bit too early to you know incur the wrath of her end, I wouldn't mind trying to find Rachel. Um, well, you don't know. You can go inquire. Yeah, I'll um, I'll, I'll make the suggestion to the guy saying like, um, just so we try and stay on her end's good side as much as possible, considering you know, like this is good side, this is bad side, and we are like there. <laughs> <laughs> um, At least his opinion is you can't get any worse. Yeah, I'm, I'm um, sure we can take so... some gold out of a uh, mummy Oti's bag and and give him some more sure. gold. That will that'll sh- shut him up for a bit. But yes, um, shall we try and find Rachel, see how it's going, see how she's doing? Um, that seems like a plan. Then, yeah, try and find. All right. But no. Okay. So, Russ is like, hey, I've never been here before. Get me wherever, guys. Show me the sights. So, oh, I'm, pla- I'm, I'm not planning to go to Wade's or Rachel's. I just want to go to a blacksmith that's probably going to be in the market. So, I might take Russ with me. Okay. Um, show him around the area see what so you see the market and whatnot and it'll give us a good walk around to yeah. show them the different sites and stuff yeah point yeah, out uh, governor edgecombe's mansion as you go past and, and just point out how how slippy and slidey those walls are you can't climb them <laughs> that's an interesting uh, thing unless to talk you're about, a half sure. of course halflings can climb them very easily half yeah, elves yeah. on the other hand two of them can do it i can climb them now <laughs> I highly doubt that all mighty Loic can claim them still. I feel like there's some history there. I'll I'll talk to you about it later. Okay. Come on, Odie. Let's go see what this place has to offer. Does anyone else just need marketplace blacksmiths? I'd take that as a no. Okay, cool. Okay, so Oti and Russ head off towards the market to start looking for a a blacksmith um, for their needs. Meanwhile, the rest of you make your way to the previously Governor Edgecombe's mansion, now Mayor Clearwater's mansion. The interior of this building has changed significantly. There are a lot more floral patterns and designs in the curtains and the carpets. A lot more flowers and plants hanging from pots and the like. Uh, just giving this place like a much more naturey kind of feel. Uh, the windows are pretty much all open, um, and they have that. There's a sweet aroma of. Like, you know, freshly baked, uh, like shortbread biscuit, just just hovering through the air a bit. Um, 
You can see a tiefling uh, at the receptionist. Um, you have met this individual before, only once, however. Uh, they were they were the previous receptionist for uh, May Redgren. Uh They welcome you and they ask uh, what their what your business is today. Hello, we were we were hoping to see uh, Mayor Rachel, if possible. Oh, um, I do apologise. I'm fortunately she's completely booked out for the rest of the month. Um, is it urgent? Yes. All right. Well, I suppose I could, I'll probably be able to schedule you in at some point in the I'm second of shout. autumn. Rachel. Ah! Make a constitution check. To bail. Yeah. Oh, okay. that's, that's, a, that's, a save. that's a save. You may re-roll. That's hey! I'd, that's I'd, I'd do it if it the, Yeah, I'd do it if it was the other way around. So. Mm. Which um, it normally is. Okay, so <laughs> yeah. it, as you bellow this out, Ari, um, the chandeliers and the little wine glasses on the sides go... And you just hear... Little taken aback. What? We've come to see you. You're going to come see us or what? I'm busy. Who is it? Oh, the teeth has just got her fingers in the ears at the moment. Once I put you in power, get here. You hear a scrape of a chair on the top floor. Small pattering of feet. The crashing ballings of somebody being knocked over. Um, somebody's saying, sorry, sorry, I'll clean it up. Silence for about 30 seconds. And then from the back walls, you see the little halfling girl um, <laughs> with pinky, pink, pinky pigtails, flowery dress, um, quite baggy-eyed now. Like, definitely got to look like she's like, look a lot of stir, look like a lot Lost a lot of sleep. Um, is it a little bit more like filled out in the cheeks a bit? And she rushes up to you, and the thing that you'll probably notice first is that she has got an engagement ring on her finger. She's <gasps> no longer a gnome. Oh, she, uh, I thought she. <laughs> no, she no, no, she's a halfling. No, she's but, a gnome. Let me have a look at my notes. I'm pretty certain I'm not going mad. I, I, I just remember her being the same as Wicca. Oh, yeah, you are. Yeah, right. She's a fucking gnome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she completely changed you... race. Good thing you take notes. Um, yeah, so you, you rub your eyes, and um, she's a little smaller, actually, than what you initially <laughs> thought. Um, no, but yeah, the gnome rushes up towards you, and she's like, It's you! Oh, my God! How are you guys? We're well, we've been very busy. Sorry we haven't stopped in to see you sooner. Oh, I've been so busy. I probably wouldn't have been able to see you. I, you, I actually can just, you actually just dragged me away from some really boring stuff, so thank you. Anytime, that's what we're here for. <sighs> Do you like what I've done with the place? It's very flowery. And I nod. Uh, I mean, not... Uh, not my, not this place. I mean, the town. Oh, the town! The town is bustling. Yeah. It's thriving. Yeah, I've, I've, everywhere. I've, yeah, I've, I've drained the, the lower quarter district. I've revitalised all of the buildings. I hired some contractors from Vorid to come here and build new houses and replace the ones that have been broken or burnt down. Um, I arrested all of the previous like corrupted guards and threw them in the jail. Um, yeah, and. Uh, I've got a special partnership with um, uh, the the patrons of the of the snake's poison. Now renamed the snake's apple. Ah, oh, well, I'll have to call in and see them shortly. And speaking of special partnerships, what's that rock on your finger? Oh, yes. Um, well, in my position, I had a lot of suitors, and and were more eager than this fella, um, by the name of Deku. He was a very charming individual. Um, I actually met do him I in one of my meetings. Uh, you do. Like other than from My Hero Academia. Uh, you do <laughs> recognise the name. It is um, uh, it is the street name of Blade. Oh, when he wants, oh, to, go, when he wants to go incognito. Nice. Uh, so yeah. uh, I can imagine mine and uh, Rannis' mouth just kind of drop when we hear Deku. What? Yeah. You see, the worst thing is, I was expecting you to say Blade. 
<laughs> I don't know why. As soon as as soon as you said the game, it's like it's going to be fucking played, and then it wasn't. But no, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's a very charming individual. He's um he's he's a wonderful human. Um, but uh, yeah, no, he 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 he's been very very supportive. Um, he was so quick to get engaged with me and just plan this big lavish wedding that I I couldn't say no. That sounds like true love to me. Yeah. I did think Blade was a tiefling. He is. Dragonborn. Uh, the Dragonborn was his... Uh, was his... Uh, yeah, was the second whom, yeah. He kill- whom he killed. That's so where the confusion came from. But, but she definitely said human. Yes. I mean, I'm not dropping Blade in it. Still owe that guy. Still owe that guy a lot. So I will just nod and agree. But no, it, it, it sounds lovely. It, like you've done a great job with the town. It looks like yeah. everything's looking up for you. Yeah, I've I've done everything that I've tried to do, but things are getting a little bit serious, unfortunately. Um, ever since of ever since Mel Tokyo, um, kind of rebelled with you guys actually <laughs> yeah um yeah the council's kind of disbanded and now we're just kind of left to our own devices uh they split off into three factions led by the most influential of the council members uh Haftre, ogden and beatrice and they are fighting amongst themselves there's no peace there and i'm hoping the- we can bring some peace and civility to that i mean i i would i would cherish the thought that the south has erupted into quite a large war zone unfortunately but, we will um, see what we can do but as limited as my sources are um i've i've obviously had to close the gates for our own safety uh we've had quite a few um unprovoked attacks from uh, council member loyalists, unfortunately, uh, you know, uh, a detachment from maybe Beatrice groups will come in, and an detachment from, and a few soldiers from Ogden's would would come in, you know, seeking rest, and they'd beat up and they'd start brawls and fights in the streets, and uh, it was best just to close off the gates to prevent any more of that happening. But it so, it might be necessary for us to get out of the gates to go and see them. Would, would that oh, be of course oh, not oh, immediately, course. but but yeah. Of course, I'll pass the message on to the gate guards and I let them know that you can, to definitely let you out. Um, yeah, things are just very tense around here, but you are welcome. Yeah, I can see that. To... I look outside at all the tents. <laughs> uh, well, you are welcome to uh, rest here as much as you want. Um, would you like some fresh shortbread? I'm just baking some now. Oh, it smells delicious. Oh, it's a... Just... State secret now, not just a family secret. It's a state secret. <laughs> I would absolutely love some of your shortbread. Um, she happily complies, and she gives you more portions than you thought you would get. Um, Gnomes very much like to cook. Even when they think they're halflings. So, but yes, I, I mean this this visit was really just just calling in and, and checking that that everything was okay and, and saying hello. It, it's been a very long time, but uh, I understand that you've got very very um, important matters to get back to. We yes. want to keep you. Is, is there anything we can do for you while we're here? Um, I mean, I've. I'm not sure if there is, really. We're just kind of in limbo. We still stand with you, by the way. The, 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 bad, the bad things that the king is doing, we of Brian absolutely cannot abide by it. So we, we stand with you still. That is great to hear. Thank you for your support. Well, um, I'll let you get on with it. I need to get back to it now. Um, it was really nice seeing you all again. And thank you for everything you've done so far. Thank you, Rachel. Take care. Let us know if you need anything. I certainly will. Bye-bye. She um, 
Cut season. Harry's back upstairs. Um, the tiefling um, sort of leans forward towards you, Arabella, and says, Hey, uh, you're friends with the mayor, right? No. No, not at all. Oh, you just look like you were. What's up? Do you, uh, do you pull some weight and ask her if I can have a race? You could just ask her yourself. I'm sure she she'd happily she said, do one. She said no. But if it came from you... I mean, do you deserve a raise? I mean, I've been here for two administrations, yeah. But, but she's spending a lot of the, the money from the town improving the town as a whole. And my, con- my, buy. my contribution should, should reflect that. I can't believe you're trying to make me a union rep in my frickin' D&D life as well. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's your current wage? Um, I'm currently on the, um, uh, uh, three gold a month. I'll give him 15 gold. Consider it a bonus. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh, and, and bear it in mind next time that we need to come see Rachel. Y- y- yes, uh, uh, of course. And she takes it like that's a significant portion of money for them. Yep. <laughs> well, it's just like five months, so, you know. Now everybody's happy, and it cost me 15 gold, which... Pff, walking around money. <laughs> well then. So, you're... Meeting with Rachel, a happy one, a happy reunion. Eat it. Where would you guys like to go from here? Well, I immediately want to go to the snake's apple and go find Blade and find out what the fuck is going on. And seeing as I don't need to go wage, I probably will do that while the others do that. Okay. So, Verity, Corgrin, and Arabella, do you go to Wade's? Aye. Right. Yeah, a lot of my stuff has been damaged, <laughs> so I kind of need a okay. demigod interference on it. All right. So, OT, what exactly are you looking for in the market? Oh, yeah, um, aside from the blacksmith, of course. Just have it just sort of having a pot around and I think I will ground the market with Verity last time we were here. So just mm. kind of pointing out the stalls and you know, if there's any local cuisine that they have that they might not have anywhere else, then show Russ that. Um it's not I'm not necessarily looking out for things, it's more just to show Russ around. Okay. Yeah. So you, you um introduce uh Russ to the local favourite of Broth Brime. Brine, Brinic Broth, even. Brinic. Um, Brinic Broth. That Sounds is, lovely. Uh, it's, a, it's, it's effectively a soup uh, with a great deal of pastry fluffed up in it with some carrots and uh, some, te- uh, some broccoli uh, with a, a hint of uh, gravy and honey. I say it sounds lovely again with less sarcasm. <laughs> hey. So, um, and I might grab some rations actually while we're here. Just yep. grab a couple standard of rations. P- standard yeah. PHP prices. Yeah, that's fine. I'll do that now. Okay. So, Verity, Arabella, and Corgan, you walk up to the. Could relatively... I have made a yeah. point of taking like a, a thousand platinum pieces from OT if we have that many. <laughs> you know, try and sweeten her enough a bit. And if you she's willing to give them platinum? to me. Sounds doable. Uh, yeah, we've got a thousand platinum. <laughs> From the look on Ellie's face, as she just said, "Yes, we've got a thousand platinum." I think we have a bit more than a thousand platinum. <laughs> Do you give it to Arabella when she asks? I would give it to Corgrin, but they would I... have it. I, I don't understand if you wouldn't give it to Renas. 
But what is wrong with giving it to Excuse me? Excuse me, just because she's insulting you, don't drag me into this malarkey. Wait, I give, I give you're Ari, the criminal. You are the I give, I give Ari criminal. a copper piece. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to throw it at you, and I really hope that it hits you right in the middle of the head. Make, make, an, att- <laughs> make an attack Luke, roll. your proficiency is a disadvantage. Yeah, make an attack roll with disadvantage. Oh, no, I'm pretty certain I'm back to normal now. Surely it's been... Because I think it was only like half a day left when we got to Baron Zala. Like I'll happily roll it at disadvantage. Yeah, fine. Roll it, I don't... yeah, yeah, still roll it. I think For after the last this one. next long, next long rest, will you'll be fine. Okay, um, just an unarmed strike, yeah. Yeah. I feel like I should get my dex bonus, so that's not my strength. Yeah, no, no, it is, it is your dex bonus because you're flicking it at her head. Yeah, so I'm just gonna play about with that. And Nineteen. Fucking hits. <laughs> All right, so. And I got. <laughs> Pop her in the head. Yeah. Ow! <laughs> I'll poke my tongue out at you and turn around and walk away. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just jingling the the fucking sack because I imagine it's basically for a thousand platinum pieces. I imagine it's a sack. It isn't just turn you know. And glare a at him. I'm just like <laughs> sounds like a lot of money. I'm just being like a kid who's just been given a tenner by his mum, like, oh, go to the go to the tuck shop, darling, you know, go buy yourself something. I'm like, oh, go to the shop, I've got some money. There's no slight meant there at all, just Corgrin is, is happy carrying cash. Yeah, and, and I feel very slighted, because I'm not trusted, which is why I want to glare at this really, really happy dwarf that's like, I got the money. Uh, Think about, imagine if we had this back in the day, you know, when we were scrounging for copper and silver, and just, oh, Back when you were poor and didn't know better. Mm-hmm. Oh dear. So, anyways, you three <coughs> walk up to the relatively common-looking building of Wade's wonderful emporium. The chimney is currently active, with that hint of rainbow smoke coming out of it. Of only the one entrance at the front, now with some uh, juniper flowers currently in bloom. Uh, on the sides of the door. You just go straight in. If does it seem unlocked? Yeah, it's hope. It's a, it's it's in within business hours. Just a quick kind of knock and then enter. Just a coming in. Uh, okay, so you walk in, and you immediately met with that familiar store with all the wonderful items all around you. Now, pretty much now, most likely within your price range. And you immediately get that phrase. Hello, and welcome to Wade's Wild... Oh! It's oh, you. Oh, Haren. It's our best friend, Haren. We're closed. Please leave. You know, Haren, we've been calling, we've been calling you homie to, to everyone that we know because, you know, you're Haren, our homie. Like a, a good friend. Why, why do I don't when, speak like, dwarfish. Times we have brought money. His eyebrows raise ever so slightly. We have proven to be paying customers at this point, at least. Paying customers, yes. Favorite customers, absolutely not. Hmm. I think we're. Wade's favourite clients, though. Wade is currently very busy fulfilling orders for your armed forces as requested. Wade! Don't do it. He's concentrating. No, but genuinely, we do. We, we're here for services. Ugh. <laughs> so, I, when I say, when I, when I sarcastically shout for Wade, I genuinely, I mean it. We do need Wade. Unless you can fix our stuff. I can take the order and pass it on to Wade. It's what I'm employed for. Can I try shouting Wade now? <laughs> yeah. Uh, make a, uh, anyone who shouts for Wade, just go ahead and make a quick constitution check. Oh, not meant to be disadvantaged, so there would be an 18. N10. 
Fuck it. Laughing as loud as one of you. Fuck it. <laughs> Thaumaturgy. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've got this cantrip. I'll use it. I'll make so, the windows roll. All of you together, you just in use and just shout out, Wait! And the back door bursts open with a great big muscular boot. And the bold headed, well groomed moustache man of way just comes out and says, Yeah. Oh! It's you guys! Oh! oh, oh, oh. How are you? How are you? How... Oh my goodness, oh, it's been so long. Uh, Heron, Heron, look who it is, who it is. Yes, Wade, I know who it is. Oh, 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 I'm um, sorry, you caught me right in the middle of something. Uh, let's start again. Hi there, how are you? Do oh my god, no! <laughs> I just kind of just... get out my bow and be like, a big acid blob got it. Oh, what is this? Down to my beautiful weapon. Oh, no, 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 I can't tolerate this. No, I'll fix it for you right now. Wade, you have orders. Right now, right now. Uh, I've got some things as well. Do you mind? Oh, uh, what, what, what's wrong, Cor my, my dear Corgan? What's going on? Your what, divine you had... plate isn't so divine anymore. He holsters the, um, the, the bow and immediately drops down to your level and starts caressing you over the chest and on your shoulders as he just starts inspecting the armor. He goes, Oh no! No, it's been damaged. The enchantments have been reduced. Oh, that's not, that's not good at all. Oh. No, I'll, I'll fix this for you, my friend. Absolutely. I shan't have any of my work being damaged in such a way. What, what manner of creatures could have undone my enchantments? I, I make extra sure that they are quite permanent. It was like a giant turd. That is strangely insulting. I mean, it should be. It, it was literally called, like, we kind of dubbed it the failure. I don't know if it had a name, but that's, it was like this giant black goo that was left over, like a creation in, in, a, in a dwarven um, um, fortress, which was kind of being occupied by doesn't really matter, I suppose. By by one of our enemies, shall we say? And um, yeah, it was it, it exploded when it died, and um, it did this. Corgi, did you by chance happen to save any of this creature? Russ did. Russ has a pocket mm. full of eyes. Who's Russ? Oh, um, I, I'll I'll go grab him. He he probably want to meet you anyway. Um, so I'll kind of go make a break for it. And try and grab the half elf. Um, oh. he's, he's our, he's the new half-elf, you know, he's the second on rotation. Um, oh. <laughs> um, but yes, he, he, he happened to pick up some eyes from the creature. Could I have them, please? And I'll, I'll fix your equipment for free of charge if I can just have a little bit of that creature. I'm sure yeah. Russ don't mind, won't mind. I think it was his intention to, to give it to you, to give you the, the eyes. Wade, you can't make those kinds <laughs> of business decisions. No, no, it's okay. It's okay, Haren. Like, we're not going to fleece you. We'll pay for services. Just don't fleece us. I won't take a single penny from any of you. I shan't hear another word of it. Wade. How about we consider it a tip, Wade? That way we're not paying you. We're just saying thank you. No, 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 no. No, no, no. The rule is, you give me a bit of that goo, or that creature, or whatever it is, and I'll fix your equipment... And you're uh, and free of charge. And Haren, I won't have anything to say on this matter. This is my reputation on the heart, on the line. I can't have people know that some of my weapons were damaged by a goo monster. With eyes. With eyes. <laughs> just I like to imagine Corgrin and, and Wade nodding at Haren. Just <laughs> after the with eyes. With eyes. Sorry. Um in Baranzala, there was a teleportation circle, wasn't there? Nice. Yes, there was a receiver, yeah. And just, um, was there goo, like, left on the premises? Uh, it was very quickly disintegrating, so Russ saved what he could. Oh, okay. Never mind, then. Alright, well then, um... Orgrin, you and Wade need to make a persuasion roll against Haren. So Lord, like... my Mardin, <laughs> please. Oh, God. Forsaketh me not. Uh, persuasion. Oh! 
<laughs> 21. <laughs> <laughs> um, Haren purses his lips and just goes, I suppose the reputation of the business is more important than monetary gain. Does my robe and wand also need fixing? No, you were actually able to save. You, 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 you made you the save with me. On, yeah, you succeeded oh. on the death blast, so none of your equipment was damaged. Nice. Well, then, Wade, I suppose I can slot in their appointments for tomorrow afternoon. Wade just goes, absolutely not. I'll be doing it right now. Wade, you need to address Lord Calcentine's armour. Uh, he can go eat a banana. I've got real work to do. You hear that, Haren? Eat a banana. I'm surprised a dwarven individual like you knows what a banana even is. I mean, we've got to import them, and, you know, I, I just give him this sarcastic, sarcastic spiel of, you know, Dwarves do know what fruit is, though we are partial to fungi. He just gets increasingly more annoyed with the <laughs> you'd say. <laughs> just, like, just purses his lips, taps his foot, crosses his arms, and just rolls his eyes on occasion. Yeah, he's not a happy bunny. And that's how we know about bananas. Well, I found that inf insightful and informative. Hmm. Thank you, Wade. You're welcome, Corky. Well, then, then, it is settled and it is surmised. I will go work on their items now. Um, when do you think, uh, um, Abby will be back? Oh, she's pretty quick, I imagine, only five minutes. She'll probably have already, she's probably already dragging Russ back by his ear as we speak. Very good. Well, I can't wait to meet this individual. I hope he's just as interesting as the rest of you. I th think so. Next week. <laughs> mm. Forgotten next. Oh. Well, I will now present a, a choice to you guys because I was kind of hoping Russ would be here tonight and there was no way I could kind of sort of get around it really. Um, when Russ gets there, something may be revealed. It's up to you whether or not you want to experience that with or with without Fiona. With Fiona, definitely. Yeah, yeah I think I think we can wait for next character. week. We're still gonna be in Brian next week, so I imagine. Uh, mm. Okay. Like we could always do like a you know, miss out a chunk. A flashback. Yeah. Kinda of like how we did when Zach couldn't play that one night. Oh uh, yeah. Okay. Oh nice. <clears throat> so uh, Wade takes all of your damaged equipment, and he'll promise he'll be ready. Uh, it'll be ready by the end of the day. He's just got to get off, get rid of the goo, um, the residuum acid, uh, reinforce the enchantments, and should be good to go. While we're there, can mm -hmm. we have a little shop, see what is being sold. A great manner of things are being sold. Do you have anything specific in mind? No, I suppose it was just kind of if, if there was a specific stock or if this is your kind of shop where it's like, oh, it's there. <laughs> you know, you want to buy so-and-so? It's there. Well, there's a very limited, well, it's very limited in what it has. Yeah. Um, but we are talking premier magic items and weapons and armor here. So hmm. basically, if there is, if there's like a minor magical thing here, they might have it. Uh, it would be grossly overcharged, but this is also the case of like if you want to get plus three weapons, um, if you want to get a holy adventure, uh, uh, Avenger, if you want to get like plus three dwarven plate armor or something like that, this is the place to get it from. Are there any magical daggers or scimitars or anything like that? Because I don't have yes. any magic melee weapons. Yes, uh, plus two and above for both. Oh, okay, um, how much would they cost? Uh, well, for both of them. Um, uh, for one, uh, I'll. One of each, yeah. One of each. So Haran will just, just go, Oh, well, if you're actually going to be a paying customer, I suppose if you buy them both at the same time, I 
could give you a 2% discount. And what if I was to buy three? Services. A 3% discount for continued services. So generous. So if she bought a hundred... <laughs> <laughs> then I would go to a cap of four. Um, how much for two daggers and a scimitar? Oh, these are daggers that are created by the Master Craftsman Wade. You won't find anything else like it in all the land, or may say, the world. And now, having I wielded his bow for the last couple of months, I am inclined to agree with you. Literally <sighs> never seen anything like it before, nor since. Good. I'm glad to hear that we have some form of recognition for our services here. Um, I have these particular daggers here uh, that are exceptionally potent. They, you won't get any sharper than this. Um, and he is referencing plus three daggers. If you require two of them, then I shall mark it at 17,500 gold. Both. Both of them. If you require a scimitar, as sharp as that can be, and he is referencing a plus three scimitar, I will whack that on for another 25,000 gold pieces. Barter! I guess I'd just get three daggers if that's the case. How about three daggers for 20,000? Make a persuasion roll. At disadvantage, because he hates you. That's your guidance! <laughs> I'm probably the worst person to be doing this. Um, 15. Which, I, for me, I think is really good. <laughs> it is, yeah, it is very good. Three daggers, 27,000 gold. Mm. 22. Make one more final persuasion roll. Wait, can I add something to help? To give yeah. advantage? Um, it's going to be like, hey, Aaron, what's going to be better? 22,000 gold Leon's in your... Just woke, Leon's just woken up. Sorry about that. Okay. So. Um, you just made a persuasion roll to try and convince him to bring it down to 22,000, didn't you? Yeah. I and think I Verity think, was um... doing something to help. Yes. What were you yeah. doing, Verity? I was just going to say, think about it, Heron. Would you rather 22,000 gold in the shop now, here, for you? Or however much you want to make it, like, potentially never getting here? Just throwing that out there. Blip, 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 blip. I'll adjust the DC on that, then. I reckon it's, it's just gone up, because he, he doesn't yeah. care about money, he just doesn't want to give it to us. <laughs> Aaron will look you square in the eyes, Arabella, and he will say, 24,000, and I will give you one of my patented customer smiles. <gasps> okay, fine. Smile, yes. Yeah. There we go. I'll, I'll give him the money. <laughs> oh. Thank you for your business. Simply terrifying. I'll treasure it forever. Um, just just as a oh wow, that is beautiful. <laughs> oh, I feel I feel whole now. That's three. Look, plus the three light daggers. of Moradin shines upon that is, me. Uh, it's three plus three daggers you just purchased. Nice. Um, do you want to chuck one in your thing, Rich? Thank you. No problem. Are they achievement, by the way? Plus three daggers. No. Oh, no. Awesome. I remember a time where such a price would have scared you out of this store. My, how rich you've become. Um, yeah. Just as a, a quick... If I wanted to commission something, Haren... Do I need weed here, or do I... Do I... No, I would take the specific details, and then I would pass it on to her. No, no, no! Hold on! I want to hear this! Oh, Ari, did, did you want a shield? You know, what we talked about? 
or if you need a reminder, it was Aurora's scale being turned into a shield. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, um I, I wouldn't mind. Rummage. Oh, bag of holding. <laughs> Pull out. Um We've got this. It's Um Wade just starts speeches. Hooray and just goes. Is that? <clears throat> what? What were you gonna say? Nothing. Well, go on, finish your sentence. We're friends. Yeah, we're not. We're we friends. Right? What a bitch. We will be. Wade well, just, just like sparkly eyes, just like. Ha, ha, ha. Is it's... this an actual scale from an ancient white dragon? Which one? Aurora, the freezing embrace. <laughs> <laughs> Clean up an aisle three. <laughs> Please, can I have this? If you turn it into a shield, you can. <laughs> well, I hope you're happy, Corgan. You've broken Wade. He'll be fine. He just needs a second, I'm sure. Have I ever told you how much I love each and every single one of you from the core up? <sighs> As a craftsman, I have been stuck in the land, born out of my senses. And then one day, one day she came. The halfling, the eyes of a hawk, and the skill of a beetle. Then... I could see beyond. And once again, my fire was reignited, and I gave her a weapon that transformed her into a magnificent phoenix. And then her friends came along, each and every one of them with their own wants and desires. This has been the happiest few months of my life. I, 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 thank you. Thank you so much. Makes me feel like I have a family. A hand on, on Wade's shoulder, just let some of that radiant, you know, holy warmth go through him. Just, no, Wade, thank you. You feel like my father. I could be, I'm 70 odd. Oh, well, I'm, um. And then, how old am I? I don't know, Wade. That's part of why I like you. You're mysterious like that. Oh, yes. Look at the others. What? Guys, I have a theory. Maybe Heron doesn't like us because he's jealous. That's completely and absolutely poppycock, and I shan't entertain the thought any further. Now, please leave. <laughs> Insight. <laughs> yeah, <he's> Nineteen. <laughs> yeah, he's fucking bullshit in his bull. <laughs> Stay, the... Wait, Stay the fuck should... away from his flame. <laughs> Wait, I think Heron might need you to just reassure him that he is your one and only saying he is your oh. desire. Of course he is. If he wasn't, I wouldn't employ him. <laughs> oh, you're talking about... Oh. Mm. And then, we keep our business life and our personal life very separate, don't we? Yes, we do, Wade. Mm. Well, Wade looks at her and then looks at the rest of you, especially you, Verity, and she goes, Would you like me to cook my sausages tonight? Of course I would. You know it's my favourite. Mm. <laughs> uh, enough Love of this. In the air. Enough of this. <laughs> my favourite. Oh, you wish for a... You wish for a shield to be made of the scale. This is no small task, but only Wade would be able to do this perfectly and effectively. It will require a couple of days to get it done right. Isn't that all right, Wade? Yes, this is the sort of thing I don't particularly want to rush. Um, I only get one chance at this, and <sighs> dragon scales are notoriously tricky to bend and mould to your will because they already have a will of their own. Uh, an ancient white dra an ancient scale, even more so. Uh, the the latent magic in this is exponentially large. 
I'm more likely to freeze myself than I am actually to create anything out of it, but and that's where the fun and the challenge lies. I so, see. Yes, give me two days, free at the most, and I'll create you a shield for which you've never seen. I mean, I've also got various other dragon parts and also some purple worm are they parts. An- are they ancient? Adult? Well, I'm afraid, Corgi, you should have probably left at that because my appetite has been spoiled now by this majestic gem. Oh. I mean, I'll take them and I'll make something of it, but... This... This will be my... Piece de resistance? This is my piece de resistance, my, my, my La Rosa, my, my, my Picasso. They're ancient gods, in case you didn't know. I have been enlightened, thank you. Um, if you don't mind, I, I, you'll never, you two, don't speak a word of this, right? On Moradin's beard. There's technically three of us here, because if I'm back, that means I got a oh, half yeah. elf with me. Okay. None of a you four. speak a word of this. And I, if the half elf is coming, then I'm going to be there as well. All right. Oh, five. there we go. We're, we're all here. <laughs> we, oh, me. we all keep this on the fucking down low, okay? Yes. Wait, what, what part of this are we keeping on the down low? Well, you'll find out if you just agree. Ooh. That's a terrible deal. Well, I'm Hope already sense. pretty down low, so, you know. Sure, well, friend, of course. Well, we know that Renas likes his little daggers of venom, right? Yes. Well, remember that time I skinned the purple worms in... Drogon de Morda? That was horrific, mm-hmm. yes. Sorry, Baron Zala. Mm-hmm. Wait, getting my dwarven cities mixed up. Um, Haren, uh, Wade, sorry. Um, yes? Would you like to make a purple worm dagger of venom? Is the, is the venom still potent? Yes, it is. Does the king shit in the woods? I'm gonna get probably. He could do. But no one would talk about it. Exactly. I will hand him the seven vials of purple worm poison and the ten pristine purple worm fangs. Okay, so he takes the one vial and says, okay, I can do it. Two. Oh, oh, three. Oh, four. Oh, oh, five. Oh. <laughs> he gets super excited again as his desk is just, there's vials and fangs. It's like, I'm fairly certain there's enough poison in here to kill Bride twice over. Don't say that too loudly. Don't, don't spill any and don't let anyone from the snake's apple get it. Who are you talking to, sir? The greatest craftsman of all time, of course. Wade Gunson. There we go. Told you. I will... I'll have to do this after the shield. Mm. So I'm going to have to put four bears on your orders, but um, you want me to create this into a dagger. And then you want me to take all of this poison and put it into a singular blade. Is that right? I think he'd like that, yeah. Judging by Richard's I... face, yes. Heaven, I'm probably going to die. I'm so excited. Well, remember, there's a church over the street, and they can help with those kind of matters. Or if not, call me. We would bill you anywhere. I'm sure you would. And probably more for the inconvenience. Well, we're talking prices now. Despite the fact that this obviously has made Wade very excited, there is still work to be done. For the ancient gold, well, the ancient white dragon piece or scale that you have supplied, it will certainly knock off a large amount of money, but we're still paying for Wade's time here. So, whatever contraption he's able to come up with, should we just call it a straight 15,000? 10, and I reckon Wade will make your sausages two nights in a row. Make a persuasion roll at advantage. (laughs) 
16 for a plus zero, that's all right. <laughs> I will not tolerate that kind of talk in this shop. This is a place of business, not a place of home cooking. The price is 15,000, and you are, say that one more time and I'll bump it up again. I look at OT. <laughs> She's here now. <laughs> she has the purse. <laughs> 15,000 silver pieces? 15,000 platinum pieces. So we'll settle on gold. <laughs> 15,000 gold pieces? I said, Helen! Helen looks at Wade. He just puts his hands on his hips. 15,000 gold pieces. Yay. Yeah. Of course, of course, and I will take it out the thing, but I do I'll calculate. Hang on. As for all this venom, potent it into a singular blade, dagger of all things, so smaller, much more dangerous. We're talking about cost of. You have supplied the materials, but we are talking about danger of actually crafting such a thing. This one's going to be a little bit more expensive. Uh, insurance for Wade's life, just in case he accidentally poisons himself and is out of action for a few days. Uh, this one will have to be charged at 35,000 gold pieces and not a penny less. Can we give you some things to knock down the price? What things? I'm got some, looking. Got some young dragon claws, fangs, and scales. How many? Various different colours, but anywhere between one and ten, basically. I'll take them all to knock off five thousand gold. Six. Oh. I also have some unicorn hairs left over to help knock off the price. <laughs> Did he say no, by the way? Yes. <laughs> I think he's fed up with haggling. Probably. I'll take the rest of your. I'll take all of your unicorn ha- unicorn hairs. How many do you have? I have five. I'll knock off another five hundred for each hair. Off. Mm. Or two thousand five hundred. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it'll help. I have this dwarven candle that doesn't seem to stop burning. I stole it from. Darren Zala. She did. But, you know, we don't the deal, of the table, we don't deal in stolen artifacts in this store. Fine, I procured it. I rescued it from a dilapidated cave in a forgotten city. It is a relic. It needs to be preserved. It needs to see candlelit dinners again. Make a persuasion roll at disadvantage. <laughs> I also have that key equipped disappearing chest. No deal. I'll put it back on my back. A disappearing key chest, you say? Mm Mm-hmm. Really good for keeping all your money safe. Does it have our logo on it? Can your logo just be added? (laughs) No, it doesn't. No. No, we have no use for that here. (coughs) You might have noticed from the design of the store, but we don't have anything to hide here. We're fully sure of our craft and our prices. So if we wanted something that would hide money, we'd just make it ourselves. Enough. Of curiosity as well, just kind of since we're here and my mind is turning. If we wanted you to improve something you've already made for us, how would we go about doing that? Oh, I don't think I could improve anything that you've I've already made. Unless I'm giving additional materials. I mean like for example the dwarven play. If if I didn't necessarily want you to make it more magically powerful, but if I wanted you to make it more strong, like, you know, tougher armor. I'm just picturing like the holiest, best arm in the world, with a few more steel plates just bolted yeah. on top of it. 
Mm. One's gold, one's like steel, one's like adamantite. Corgi, Corgi mm. you know, I take a very good personal pleasure in making sure that you shine greater than anything on the battlefield. Yeah. Um, but this is where I'm going to have to come down to your level and say, no, your armor is perfected. Fair and I shan't, do, I shan't do anything to sully that look of yours. You're too kind, but... I just... just, just I'm, sorry it, for the, I'm sorry for the disappointing news, but if I were to slap a few more strips of armor, the entire aesthetic figure would go to hell. It would. But no, you're, you're very right, fair enough, and I, uh, I appreciate your, your, your honesty. Thank you. Of course. How much for a shield of plus two? <laughs> 25,000 gold. Alright, we've done this dance. 20. And I will continue to go up until you leave. <laughs> it's just... It hurts you've my made your allocated. You've made your allocated purchases for today. I've made some money. Now my patience and tolerance is one thin. Now will you pay for your poisonous stagger or will you have to take it all back? It was total was twenty seven fifty, wasn't that? Thirty five thousand reduce it by five thousand plus two thousand five hundred, so yeah, it comes to twenty seven thousand seven hundred and fifty. Yeah, no, yes, twenty seven thousand five hundred. Twenty seven thousand five hundred. Yeah. Yeah. I pay the man. <laughs> Wonderful! We're finally having a business accord. Your your items and your weapon will be ready for you within the next two to four working days. Now, please leave. And I'm also going to leave. No, don't smirk like that, Richard, you dick. I'm going to, as I'm handing over the money, I'm going to leave Haren, the spell scroll of Revivify that we've got in the bag. And I'm just going to put it there. I'm just going to say, as much as we know that you love Wade, we also don't want anything to happen to either of you. So if there's an issue, take this and see if someone can help. I suppose I could use it for fire paper. No, 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 no. Don't use it for fire. In case there's a problem, you have this. We have never been in danger in our entire lives. It's a wasted effort. I can't I say I even consider your actions to be noble in the slightest. I just viewed it as you're trying to in protect your business investment, which is very selfish of you. And oh. it's another reason for me to ask you to leave. You know, at this point, we're like, we are customers. No, you're not customers. You are family. No, they're not. Yes, they are. I'll go up and hug Wade. He gives you a big old hug back and... We're in. We're <laughs> like your weird little adopted children. You're, you're strong, Oti. Wade crushes the air out of you. I've missed hugs like this. <laughs> oh, I'm so I'm sorry. I, I, sometimes I just... Uh, it's fine. You know, don't, worry. don't worry. You're a good person deep down. And you are the best person deep down and deep up and deep side to side as well. Oh, this guy makes me feel so special. <laughs> just like, just death glare as I, as I walk past her in, as I've just got a hug from Wade. Well, the only thing that would put, the only thing that's put a damper on today is the fact that I didn't get to see that lovely boy Rannis again. I hope he does come back. I very much enjoy his presence. He's, uh, his fine hair is... Well, he stops as he feels the glare of Haren over his shoulder. He was just an interesting individual, Haren, and had nothing to it. And you're going to have a domestic, let's go. <laughs> oh, and, um, sorry, I, I apologize for formal introductions. Um, I, you must be the vast individual. What's that in your eyes? 20 minutes later. Ooh, spooky. You guys, you guys walk out of the store. I can't believe we just discovered all that. I mean, wow. Who would have guessed? Oh, jeez. If, you, oh, so if you it's all right with you... Russ? Russ just says, if it's, if it's all right with you guys, I don't want to talk about it. Let's just talk about it later when I feel better. 
Let's just, think, let's just pretend we didn't have that conversation. Moment, I get it, Russ, when you're more present <laughs> in the moment. Yeah, well, let's just pretend that we didn't have that conversation until I'm ready to have the conversation. Um, when we meet up with Ren, I was going to be like, um, so you, you know uh, that, that oath bow I gave you? Well, whilst that is happening, Renus, you make your way to a recently revitalized and newly uh, refurbished snake's apple. Does it look like no... clean and civilized? Yes, it does, actually. Uh. Actually... Not, but before it just looked like a dingy kind of like tavern slash whorehouse. Now it looks like a, respect, a respectable gentleman's den. I, I like the dinginess. It was, it was my home away from home. Mm. Um, heading your way inside, <coughs> it still has that ale smell in the air. Um, but uh, you do see a few people around there whom you recognize who they like. They don't say anything, they just tip their glasses towards you whilst taking a sip with their hoods down. I, I give them a nod, um, and I'll just get an ale from the bar. There's a new dragonborn there. This one is green. <clears throat> As you sort of clean the guy, he goes, All right, mate. Very good, thank you. How are you? Not too bad. I heard you was up in the frontier dealing with the boss's boss. Yes, I met him briefly, uh, doing a little, little bit of work for him, finding a few things. You know how it is. Well, Blade is available if you want to talk to him. That would be lovely. I haven't seen Blade in a long while. He's up on the room on the right. Fantastic. And I will take my ale. In fact, I'll... What, what's uh, what's Blade drinking these days? Oh, uh, he's, uh, he's gone sober, my mate. I... Gasp in shock. Yeah, okay. he's um, he's getting married. <laughs> I, I, I had heard this, didn't didn't quite believe it, but uh, oh, but... quite a smart thing of the boss to do actually get himself deeply ingrained inside the society of Brian. Uh, hey, why don't you go talk with him about it? I will do. Thank you very much, and I'll take also, my out. Don't let him say anything that you can consider to be cool, otherwise he'll just jump out the window again. And I've, I'm not gothy. I don't clean up that shit. I, I will try not to break any windows. Or let him break windows. <laughs> okay, so you venture upstairs down to the room that you have previously met with Blade walk inside to see it's pretty much exactly the same it's just that the windows are a little bit newer and nicer you see blade in there currently at his desk um he's currently just scribbling over some scrolls and some missives um you can see a few daggers sort of scattered out on the desk large pouches of gold on the bed and stuff and he's just sort of his ears perk up and he sorts towards you with his uh red with his um red tiefling self uh, he looks at you and just goes, Ah, well, if it isn't Renas, it's been, been a while. Been far too long since I've seen you. Heard you were a big shot now. What you doing around here? No, I wouldn't call myself a big shot. I've just, just got a bit of work to do, a few things here and there, but this will always be my home. Hmm. Look, oh, this was really my home. Work. Uh, Mainly information. Mainly as to uh, why you're getting married. Political alliances happen all the time, my friends. This time I'm the one who gets to be the allied. But do all the parties normally know it's a political alliance? Sometimes. I'm under the impression that she thinks you're human. You, you would be right. He waves his hand and you can see him cast the magic of the sky self to appear human. He looks uh, a bit stubbly with like, like auburn skin, clo like sort of slicked back, tied, greyish black hair. Um, yeah, he just sort of smirks. I mean, I got to know Rachel quite well. She didn't seem like the type that would, you know, care what sort of race you were. I'm just a bit confused. Well... Um, the problem is, is not her, 
It is the public image that I need to supply when I become the husband of the mayor of Brian. A lot of my enemies know what I look like, but none of them know me like this. You always were far too smart for me, Blade. Ah, Rachel is a fine lass. She cooks wonderful meals. Yeah, take some great I, shortbread, too. And I'll take yeah. a piece out of my pocket and eat it. Mm. I could do worse, but that is the end of the today. If I am prized tonight next to the mayor of Zebrain, after this war of yours is over, I suspect this place is going to find a bit of an exponential financial boon. And I intend to be right there, pocketing quite a lot of it for the guild. Anything that helps a guild is a good thing. I... I've done my best to help it where I can. And anything she doesn't know doesn't hurt her. So it's, it's fine in, the, in that way. I mean... Don't it's tell fine. Me you've grown a, don't tell me you've grown a conscious little Renas. A conscience? Me? It's just this, this annoying dwarf guy I hang around with all the time. He's always going on about his guard and doing the right thing. It, it, it just kind of rubs off on you after a while and you just start you know, playing along just to stop him shouting at you. I remember this little kid who came up to me once. He tried to pickpocket me so sure of himself that he knew exactly what he was doing. And I saw that fire in his eyes and I thought to myself, that is a boy with some skill. Just not a lot of talent. So, I practiced with the boy. And he grew up to be quite talented and quite skillful. Maybe you just need to be reminded a little bit of your origins, my boy. I very much have my origins, but I was stealing to survive back then, and survival isn't so much of an issue anymore. Mm. Well, I mean, it is, but for very different reasons than starving to death. Just out of curiosity, and also just to remind you, Rich, you have since learned the information that Timothy Tipper sent, Bri sent Blade to look after you after they met with Nathan. Absolutely. Just in case you hadn't... I had, had honestly that, so. forgotten that, and I, was, <laughs> I remember <laughs> at the time I really wanted to see Peter Blade, and then that was ages ago. Mm -hmm. But yes. Um... You may have heard I was I was up in the frontier recently working working with uh, with the big boss. Yes, he is apparently giving you a very important mission. Hence why I called you a big shot now. <laughs> well, we all just do what we have to, and uh, and sometimes the uh, the boss sends us on missions such as to protect wasteful little pickpockets in the streets. I cannot claim to know the mind of our boss. He's always five steps ahead of us. Ten steps ahead of you, I'm sure. Well, it still seems like you're several steps ahead of me because I had no idea that uh, our meeting was so... unrandom. There's a bit of truth in that, and a bit of untruth, as typical guild fashion. I was sent to look out for you. They neglected to tell me what you looked like, however, so I just had to look for the silver-haired little elf boy. I found about four. I know it was you, however, because you were the only one that found me. Why? Why did you not tell me all this time? It, 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 it's uh, and and why? Why did Timothy Tipper? care about me Where's well, do you want the honest answer am I likely to get an honest answer I owe you that then yes please the honest answer is the reason I did not tell you all this time is because I was not ordered to you are my charge you are my mission and I complete my missions The reason well, as to why he did it is because he, uh, I believe he fell in with your father. I have been learning more about him on my travels. But uh, this particular mission of yours is very grateful for everything you've done for him over the years. I, I would not be where I am today without you. Truth be told, Renas, this is probably the only mission I've ever looked back on. 
with pride. I've done a lot of shady stuff. I've done a lot of things I'm not happy with. I believe in the guild and I believe in the family that this place makes. And I believe that the guild looks out for each other. That being said, I have done a lot of things that I did not want to do for the guild, but I still did it. And there is only one mission. I can safely say, I did the right thing. And that was you, my boy. Well, again, all I can do is, is say thank you. It, it's my life has changed so much since since that day, and and I thought it had changed so much just by finding the guild and and finding a home. But my God, if it hasn't changed even more in the last last few months, things have gone crazy. But I would not have the skills. I would not have the the mentality had it not been for the time you spent with me. You know, I never found that wise and nice for after you. You honest with me? I will be honest with you, but there are some things I cannot tell at all. But it it is to do with with uh with my with my with my lineage, with my father's father. Oh. Um, I don't really know the details yet, but suffice to say, they they want me and a few others, and we are trying very hard to stay out of their grasp. How suspiciously ominous. All the best stories are. Indeed. Well, if you have some time, I'd very much like to play a game of chess with you. Might be used to. But I won't keep you if you need to be somewhere. I will always have time for a game of chess, but I'm afraid my skills haven't improved much since I was young. I'm Good. sure you'll still beat me. Good. I don't like to lose. With that, you guys spend the next couple of hours... Have you lose some timid chess? Actually, go ahead, and make a, go ahead and make an intelligence check. Or, if you want, a sleight of hand check. Ah, because Vanas is a... Oh, do you know what? I am. I'm, gonna, I'm well going to sleight of hand against him. Because <laughs> why wouldn't I? Oh, well, he will sleight of hand against you, and he has got a plus <laughs> eight on this. It's less about chess. And more about sneaking the board, moving the pieces without the other noticing. And whilst you, in a conventional sense, you probably would have won. But for the first time in your life, Renis, you out sleuth your master and you win the game of chess. Wait a minute, I could have sworn your queen was over there. Oh. Well, yes, but, but, but my queen moved to here in exactly the same way that your knight moved to there. Ah, uh, well done, Venus. You have grown up. I learned from the best, and I thank you again. All right. So and yeah, that I'll I'll leave it yeah. and head back and find the others. No worries. Well, you guys are all sufficiently fucking exhausted because you haven't rested yet. Very true. Do you do you want to go to Brian Wine and Beds and just rest for however long? Bed, bath, and beyond. Um, it will cost you all with uh, two gold a night. So, how many fine, however, I'll will we it. will we cover the two gold a night? <laughs> how many? Uh, how long do you guys want to stay in Bright? Your arms and armor to be repaired will be done by the end of the day. So, by the time your long rest is done, um, your your stuff will be completed. Okay. So then we can go out and speak to the Brinnett Coalition tomorrow. I mean, look, like we don't necessarily have to stay here for the shield and the and the dagger. We can just nip back. I'm sure Verity will do us a quick teleportation circle in and out, ten minutes. Um, but we can just see how long it takes Brinnick to to do. Who knows? We could be here a couple of days anyway. So I think we'll probably pay for maybe two nights at first and see how it goes from there. All right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I'm. I'm going to ask Ranas if uh, if he's not using it. Can I pretty please have the oath bow back because I am currently bowless because it's been repaired. <sighs> Just gotten used to this. Haven't even tuned to it. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Did 
There's a green box around Jack as if he's talking, but I can't hear him. Uh, oh, there you go. Yeah. yeah, I can hear you. <clears throat> so, you guys are able to short rest in Brian Wine and Beds. Relatively luxurious stay in Brian, um, considering what they have to offer. Um, li- quite a lot more, a lot busier than you, what you remember Brian Wine and Beds to be. Um, but yeah. Um, is there anything you guys wanted to role play with each other in your rest? Um, I would like to thank Abby very much for my lovely new shiny plus three dagger. I'm just like twiddling it around in my fingers. It's so sharp. It's so beautiful. <laughs> um, not quite role play, but I would like to um, unattune from the Vorpal sword. So uh-huh. I'll return that to the party i'll just kind of give it back to you just i didn't really get much use out of it and and i feel like i'll benefit more from the hammer at, at least it feels more right at least you know okay i will put it in a bag for now okay um so i'll attune to the hammer of thunderbolts all right and <clears throat> as we discussed i'll equip the um belt and the gloves okay what does that bring your strength up to now i want to say um the gloves bring it to 19 well, i think yes um but that kind of goes into what i was saying so um i th- i didn't think the gloves of ogre power were attunement but apparently they are um, as well as the belt and the hammer, but kind of like we said. So I'd probably <laughs> this might be dull, but for now I'm gonna also unattune to the ring of evasion. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, what do you possibly need that for? <laughs> I know. We'll see how much that bites me in the ass later on. Um. So I'll attune to the belt of hill giant strength. Okay. Um. And the um. Hammer, so that would be 21. I want to say it's 21. Belt of Hill Giant Strength. 21 plus 4, so 25 strength. It's because the gauntlets make your strength 19. Uh, but then the, the of... giant, the belt takes it up to 21. 21. So basically, that ignores the gauntlet spaces when you just keep it at 21. And, and then the, the hammer gives it a hammer. plus four. Yeah. 25. So, wow, I mean, that doesn't sound impressive at all. So, Corgrin's always been, you know, he's been all right in terms of his athleticism before. You know, he's fit. Um, and ready for battle. But the next time you guys see him, it's almost as if he's dropped a few pounds, then picked them up and chiseled them into fine pieces of muscle, and then slapped them in random parts of his body. He is literally the embodiment of a raging X-Man from the 90s. He is completely and utterly changed fire magic into a into a force of strength that even Bellatrix would get, be jealous of. Harry has a random flashback to the uh, the pub in. <laughs> Just the you know the kind of morning voice morning. <laughs> Still, all that strength doesn't hold hide his insecurity of having half a beard. Oh. You can see it's like it's been it's been tied together, so it's no longer just <laughs> it's no longer just a flat cut. It has been kind of pulled in and braided yeah. into just a short beard now. Yeah, I'm not yeah. braided, but uh, I don't know. I don't I don't have a beard. I don't know. You know, 
ponytailed but beard tailed. I don't know. I believe it is just braided. Fair enough. But so, yes, so yeah. that is that is uh yeah. <laughs> okay, well then. Mir, what would you guys like to do? Sleep has been a bloody long night. A bloody long you day even. I've slept. This, this is this is at the end of the long rest. My apologies. Okay, okay. Um so it's, well, okay. yeah, it's, it's, it's the next day now. So you've you've got your items back from uh, Wade. And um, yeah. Did did we get our items back from the blacksmith? Yes. Did we have to pay for anything for that? Uh, what exactly were you getting done with the blacksmith? Uh, it was just to take the minus one away from our standard items. Standard items. Uh, yeah, it will cost you. It would have costed you um, a third of the standard PHB price per item. Yeah. All right, I'll work it out. So, I mean, I guess our, our plan is to go out and see this Brinnick Coalition and see what's what's going on down there. Mm. Seems uh, reasonable. So just to go over how everyone feels about us, we have uh, Half Dre, who is not particularly keen on us, but doesn't hate us, He's but he, he's very loyal to the realm and wants the best for people. You can we say have, neutral. Yeah. We have Beatrice, who uh, is, is quite friendly with us, thanks to the Crown trying to assassinate her all those months ago or weeks ago. <laughs> and we have Ogden, who was the spineless little fuck that Ari blackmailed in the snake's poison, I believe. So he didn't really have any morals or anything. It was just he was doing what he was told because he's a spineless little fuck. Is, am I remembering him right? Um, yeah. I think he was also the easiest to bribe as well. Mm -hmm. So I think it's probably just a bribe situation of maybe he's being paid by the crown just to be a lapdog. Just a guess. So, I mean, what's our end game here? If, if Ogden was to mysteriously die of a mysterious illness, that would solve a lot of problems, surely? Probably. It, it, it depends, you know, because it, it's not, it's not, I don't think it's just Ogden that's leading it. I think it's groups of councillors that are aligned with said parties. Um, so maybe it'll be a case of persuading, or maybe it'll be a case of if there's no leadership, there's no one to rebel. But you didn't hear that from me. Of course not, oh holier than thou, Corgan. But I was just reminded of, you know, the, the like where I came from and, and that I shouldn't forget things like this. So I could just sneak in and kill them all. Everyone. The entire army. Maybe well, not. The rebel men, the rebel women <laughs> and the rebel children too. Yes. Do you have a dislike for sand? I mean, does anybody like sand? It gets places, and you, you find it days later. <laughs> Rough, it's coarse. All right, it gets everywhere. I don't know. I, I think we see what's what's what, basically, and just judge from there, if I had to guess. Sounds like a plan to me. All right, then. And I'll be all right. Okay. So, the party makes their way to the southern gate. They were expecting you. They wish you luck in your travels as they open the gate and unleash you into the world. <laughs> Make us sound like rabid dogs. You know that the fighting to the south. Why is the camper collective all the way over the hell? Why is there a camper collective there? What if I put a camper collective there? Why the fuck is. Oh, you did. Um, it was instead of the Avoidrix. I think you probably tried to um, copy the token and oh, then yeah. copied the actual name as well. Yeah. Oops. If I had to guess. Yeah. Oh, yeah I've, got, I've, got his, um, I've got his token on the GM layer, so I've just got a copy of information from that to the new token. Yeah, I'll do that later. Um, okay, so 
You know that the fighting in the south is about a day away from Brian. Um, will you be travelling on foot or will you be travelling on horseback? I, I mean, we're aiming to return to Brian, right? So, horseback? Yep. Horseback yep. it is. All right. So to rent out horses, uh, it'll cost you uh, seven. No, yes, yeah, seven horses will cost you. Uh, uh, it will cost you fifty-five. It will cost you fifty-five gold, but twenty-five gold will be returned to you um, if the horses come back alive. Enough. And we ride! It's a very good thing for us. Yeah, yeah. So drop that down to um, 50... You know, yeah, 50 gold then. Yeah. So 25 will be returned to you upon the return of the horses being alive. So. Okay, I'll take it out of the party loot. All right. Should we just pay uh, this 25 now and, and ac accept that we're probably not... We haven't had the best of luck with horses. Oh yeah, I I fully expect to not be able to return these horses, so I'm gonna just give them the money and not even could not even argue about it or anything. <laughs> All right. So you guys mount your horses and your broom, and you ride off southwards, further and further into the Brymans. At night, when you stop over to rest, those of you on watch can keenly hear the sounds of battle cries coming from quite a distance away. The wind is carrying it northwards. So there is not a big battle, but certainly the sounds of a fight with a large number of people. Why can't everybody just get along? Yeah. However, your um is relatively peaceful. Uh, your night is fine as you complete that particular long rest, and you continue riding towards the affected area. Along the way, when you come into a Quite a hilly area, and when I say like hilly, I'm mean like like quite tall ones. Um, lots of uh, lots of forests around here, and quite a number of old ruins. Not just you know, yeah. not just buildings that have been destroyed because of the fighting. There are certainly those around, like farmsteads and small villages and the like. Um, but <clears throat> ancient elven ruins scattered around here of when the elven kingdoms used to stretch out this far. On one particular path that you are happening to go over, you're going up a hill that is getting closer to a now burnt out farmstead. And as you reach, I mean, as you reach to the top, you see a massive landscape before you. The landscape itself is uh, a forested, plainy-like area, except for a smack bang in the middle is a large, sort of demi, kind of demi mountain. Like it's a ver, it's a it's a vertical drop. Like I want to say, like a boil or a, a or a skin tag in the earth, just sort of stretches out, um, kind of just dominates uh, this relatively flat landscape. From this vantage, you can see three camps. One is far the north, um, northeast. And that camp is probably the largest by far. Directly to the south is another camp, probably a little bit smaller than the other two. 
um, but it's in well defended territory. You can see the the, the trees and the the small hills around there form a great deal of natural defense for it. Um, and then further over into the west, like it's kind of like the, the southwest a little bit, um, is another encampment. This one is in the middle of a deforested area. Do we see any like banners or flags that might let us know which camp is which? Not from this distance, unfortunately. You can just make out the smoke columns that are fireplaces, the um, the abbreviations in the uh, in the colours of the landscape itself. But best you can tell, each one of these camps are probably squarely about 10, 15 miles from each other. Sorry, so could you repeat? So the largest camp was northeast? Yep. Um, to the southwest um, is a smaller camp, but a much more heavily like, well-defended area. And then to the west, like southwest a little bit, um, is uh, is an average-sized camp in a, de- in a deforested area. Biggest camp first. Ride in, see what's there. If it happens to be Ogden, slit his throat, run away. Just throw it out there. I mean, there's a chance, but I get the feeling the largest may be half tree. If I had to, if I had to guess. Well, then we do not slit half tree's throat, and we no try and appeal to his good senses, which worked so well last time. Well, it did. But we just slightly bankrupted him, which I hope he's got his money back for now, considering we said we'd pay the debt. Which we still haven't done. You just went to Wade's. Yeah, but we might need that money. Did you genuinely not give him any of the platinum pieces? No. He started talking about all the commission stuff, and then nothing really came of it. Okay, so I'm going to turn to OT and kind of just go. Hmm? <laughs> oh, hmm? Arabella, you were right. Sorry, I thought it was for if we wanted to buy anything, and then you turned up anyway, so. Gonna kind of, yeah, be angry, and then. Uh... You know, just pretend that it wasn't the fact that I completely forgot because I got distracted by talking about a dragon scale shield. And I'm going to put the blame squarely on you. Yeah. But Sounds perfectly reasonable to me. As you're staring at me, you know, just a drip of sweat over a glistening muscle, taut, bulging. Um, well, that's, I mean. Pathetic half beard. None of you reminded me to make a payment, so I'll just throw that out there. We're all equal in this blame, okay? I ride off. <laughs> so you're heading towards the uh, the biggest camp, is that right? I think so. Yeah. And, uh, I, I rode off so aggressively that... Uh... Bertie fell off a boom. Oh, yeah. People falling off brooms left, right, and center. You back on your broom, Jack? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's just that whenever somebody leaves, I have to leave and come back because that's when the audio gets all fucked up for me. Um, ah, fair enough. I, I feel like I was talking, but nobody could hear me. No, we didn't hear anything you were saying, unfortunately. I was basically insulting Corcoran and his half beard. Uh, saying how I could be for any of the debt because I was busy. Probably doing something with no importance in that shop. <laughs> Other than trying to make her and my friend. <laughs> <laughs> we are very sorry you, we missed you insulting Corgan's beard. I'm sure one day you'll be his friend, Verity. Just keep on trying. I'm sure he'll appreciate it. Okay. So, you're riding off towards the largest camp. Bigger is better. You travel on. Sorry. Quick question. Do we know yeah. why these three are arguing? Like, what points are they arguing against each other? You do not know. 
Okay. No, I think we did. I think we found out that it was um <laughs> well, other than just, you know, Ogden supports the king. Um you have learned their political affiliation. Yeah, that's what I mean. You don't yeah. know what sparked all of this. You don't no, know why no, they're no. fighting. No. I could ask, but I'll probably forget. Continue. So <clears throat> Onwards you ride, making your way down this uh, relatively steep hill, getting past a few of the forested areas until you go into an area where there was clearly a forest fire. Most of the plants and the tree life has been burnt away. Um, and on occasion, you will see the odd body here and there um, that has been slain by some sort of weapon and just kind of left, really. It's not too often. It's it might just be a case of that this particular these particular individuals might have been in a fight, got in the way, and then died of their wounds later on, and nobody ever found them. Um, you don't find anything that looks particularly like a uh, a massive fight or battle. Um, you just know that there's been fighting in this general area. Um, and as you progress onwards, Corgrin. A voice comes into your head. One that you recognize, but not in a tone that you have ever heard before. It sounds frantic and desperate. Help me! Please! Help me! It's got out of control! Please help me! You recognize it, the voice as Princess Ariel. Could you just repeat what she said? Help, help me, me, please. Help, help me, please. He's gone out of control. Please help me. I'll just respond with what's he done. There's not enough context. <laughs> a response. I will use a sending to Princess Ariel. To follow it up, to say, um, Goliath or the king? Knowledge! It's gone out of control! Ah, uh, do we think this may be something to do with, uh... Might be our fault. Oops. Where was she? She's in my mind. This is ascending. I'm aware of that. Where is she if we wanted to go and try and rescue her? Just because Jack spent all this time planning the coalition so we should go off and do yeah. something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> To be fair, this one's Jack's fault. <laughs> yeah, you have to send ascending. Um, where are you? Can you escape? What's knowledge doing? Why is he angry? Why has he lost control? Send. I'm in the capital. He won't tell me why. He's ranting madly. He's broken the Sophia's. This is the last scroll I can find. Did you say he's broken the spheres? It was spheres that she was turning on yeah. off the things. So that's probably why she can speak to us. Yeah, I'm trying to think. Like if he's if he's breaking all the like mind blocking spheres, basically. Do you mean the what? What, what are they called? Like anti divination anti divination spheres? The the anti scrying magical baubles is that what you're referring is, to is, is this your fourth scry just your third scry well no like each one can kind of respond so this will yeah, be but, she, but she's my only second she she does not have the means to contact you anymore so. yeah so this would be your you've had three back and forth posts so far so this would be your third ending then 
Okay, I'll I'll use it at uh, fourth instead then, just so I've still got a third. So what do you what do you say to on, on your next one? Um, do you mean the anti divination, anti scrying, anti sending magical baubles around the capital? Can 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 we spy more easily now? No, just the one in his office. He's breaking everything. He's he's out of control. Ooh. I mean, without the scry things, could we teleport in, snatch her up, teleport out? Is that a possibility? No, I don't think so. We don't we don't have a way of teleporting in. Oh, of course we don't. No. And if we used teleport, we'd be risky as a bisky we'd probably have to go back to path for example oh god yeah um just a quick question does wait, anyone wait. want me to scry on knowledge Rarity does no just oh, clan um uh so teleportations risky bisky business yes yes if it person with teleport, didn't anyone take anything from blah 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 place? That was knowledges from when he was like doing experiments and stuff. Oh, yes, we've all got. We've books. got a book. We no, we've got knowledges book. Yeah, we've got his like pinpoint poem the, and the stuff. Help pinpoint a teleportation. This is accurate. Better. We just need someone who can do teleport now. <laughs> Yeah, you made that very difficult for yourself. You have no one. You you have nobody on hand that can apparently do teleport at this precise moment. No, that's what I'm saying. We'd have to go back to Parfidel and we'd have to get um, Ophelia to use teleport. She probably wouldn't be too keen on doing it. Just us teleporting into the fucking capital that wants to kill her for rebelling. Just to confirm, people aren't creatures, are they? They are. Yes. Okay. So technically, I could summon her here. She is. It wouldn't work because she's of the material realm. God damn it! <laughs> okay, I, oh, okay. I say yeah. Scry on knowledge if you can. Again. It, it's knowledge of the material realm. I could summon him here. We could kill him quick. Knowledge is also of the material realm, yes. God damn all these material realm people. Then, you already know people in the material realm. <laughs> then I'll try a scry on um, on knowledge. Obviously, we've got... All right. um, what's, your, what's your spell save DC? It is 17. Um, so let me just go through the uh, knowledge save modifier. Second hand, you have heard of the target, plus five. First hand, you have met the target, so... You have met the target, yep. So that's plus zero. You know the target well. I don't know if we would be considered knowing them well, um, based on... We did learn a lot in the case. Yeah. <laughs> like his real name. Because he was the apprentice of that dude. True. That was in the books, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. So is that a wisdom saving throw? Um, yeah, bear with, uh, it's Kennegan is the name. Yeah. Um, let me just go through the other things as well. So you know the target well. Um, is a minus five. Connection, save modifier, likeness or picture. Possession or garment, body part. Um, or nail. Yeah, so we've got books, we've got possession, so it's a... I assume that's a minus two or a minus four. I don't. The way the the spell is is um, written out isn't very helpful. So like yeah. So it's a there. so effectively he has a minus seven to the save. Yeah. Does it this? Spell save is 17. I have minus 7 to this. 5, 6. I rolled a 23. 
and a 7. So that is a 30 with the minus 7? Taking no, it 23 no, or 23 no, minus 7? 23 minus 7. 23, 23 minus 7. Yes, sorry, 16. 16. So oh, one out. <laughs> I'm on the horse. Yeet! My consciousness leaves. <laughs> Fucking just slump over. <laughs> Okay. If it's just him, ten minutes doing like a fucking um, Kylo Ren in in his room, just lightsabering around, destroying tables, <laughs> I'm gonna be pissed. Your vision takes you across the landscape of Windward once more, over the frozen mountains, across the tundras, and down onto the city of Jarosukai. You expect to head towards the palace. But your vision is off towards the menagerie, centering in on the huge tower that looms over the old teleportation circle. In the brief time that you can see the menagerie, a great deal of it is currently being repaired. You don't get any more details as you go through a paned window to see a large oval office. This office is currently a mess. Chairs and tables upended, portraits broken and torn from the walls, a few other windows smashed, basins that stored silvery liquids broken on the ground, and books that look freshly burnt to a crisp. Um, and there are also those fragments of those orbs hanging from the walls that you have previously seen Ariel interact with on your last scry before you lost connection. Uh, standing there, are two individuals. One is wearing a pretty green dress with a tiara of royalty on her head, and she is cowering in fear behind half of a blown up sofa. Princess Ariel. And the other is breathing deep and heavily with a snarl on each exhale, red and black robed, horns on his head, and a red tail thrashing about. Royal Arcanist knowledge. He roars again, and a bolt of fire shoots out from his hand and blows up part of a shelf with bits of components on there. <laughs> Aria calls out to him. Calm yourself! You're scaring me! They took everything! Another foot bolt of fire shoots out and smashes away. <laughs> My collections! My personal components, my private gold, destroyed my backup forges, cast them! What do you need replacing? My brother that silence! Books they took can't be replaced, they took me decades to cover! I was saving them! They took it all! My research was destroyed! I'll destroy them! Royal Arcanist knowledge! I hereby order you to stand out and control yourself! Ariel shouts, still somewhat cowering, and knowledge rounds onto her. He jumps up on that sofa, he looks down at her as she fumbles backwards, trying to shuffle us away. Don't you think you can order me, Princess? Toriel is the only one who commands me! These damned traitors! First they wreck my menagerie, then they humiliate me in front of the whole world! Now they take my horde! I will destroy them for this! Have, have you located where they are then? No, of course not! That bastard Estran has foiled my attempts so far! Traitors, a lot of them! Hey, no! I know they hide in the mountains somewhere! We'll find them soon, and when I do, I will unleash hell on them! With that secret project you're working on? What do you know of that? Only if it will crush the rebels! Princess! I don't pry into your affairs. So don't pry into mine! What affairs would they be? Mm -hmm. It's a new, cold, refined voice. You know all too well. Ariel and Knowledge turn to see an armoured individual walking with a red cape and a brilliant sword sheathed at his left side. Oh, what a surprise not to see him in Oakenheath. Edgar! Knowledge grits his fang teeth. What are you doing here, Head, head Knight? 
I heard a bit of a commotion, so I thought I'd wander over to see if High Royal Arcanus was in the middle of being assassinated. How curious to find you here, Princess. You know how dangerous it is out of the castle. Whatever would your brother think? Rhaegar grins as he starts fiddling with a bit of exposed octopus tentacle from a jar. I, um, uh, I came to inquire of the Royal Arcanist's favour in a personal matter. Since when do you have a personal matter? What is she here for, knowledge? She comes in once every few weeks to get a spell scroll from me. A sending scroll, to be precise, he answers. A sending scroll? Whatever for, princess? You are aware that there are spies everywhere. How suspicious. Um, I... Well, you see... Of course, I don't think the king will take kindly to his sister passing information to the enemy. Nor will he take kindly to the one who gave her the ability to do so. His eyes sharpen towards knowledge. It, it, it was an order from royalty! I, I could not refuse! Uh, knowledge just get, begins to get flustered when Ariel marches right up to Edgar and slaps him across the face. Whoosh! How dare you! Insinuate that I, Princess of Windward, would aid the traitors to our realm. Betray my brother, my last living relative. Daphis is dead to me. The traitors are my enemy. My brother is my world. Who by the gods are you to suggest otherwise? There's a small pause. To which Edgar smiles. I'm down, Princess. I don't care which noble you've taken as a lover to send secret messages to. Nerve of you! Ariel turns away from him. Well, so long as you're okay, Knowledge. The king requests your presence this evening. He wishes to have an update on your latest weapon. I will update him this evening, then. Very good. Oh, and... In this mess-up, it's ill-mannered for somebody in authority to be so unorganized and dirty. But you are a tiefling, I suppose. <laughs> And he chuckles to himself as he walks out, knocking that octopus jar onto the floor as he leaves. Well, we always knew he was a dick. Knowledge hisses as after Edgar leaves, whilst Ariel turns towards him after she's sure the sound of Edgar's boots have died away. You will continue to supply the scrolls I have requested. This doesn't change anything. You risk a lot for your court romance. Are you that bored? And he just smirks at her. I should have none of that. You won't pry into my business and I won't pry into yours as we agreed. Or do you want me to tell my brother that you impersonated your predecessor for years and frauded your way into your current position? I'm sure he'll love to hear how deceitful you are when there are so many spies around. The rose has thorns. You may come to regret this one day, princess. When your brother ascends, he will know that it was I, not you, who helped him get there. As he rules the known world as a god, I will be the prime choice to rule this nation. I will be king. I will have all knowledge brought to me. And when that day comes, princess, your position will fade into obscurity. Yes, yes, and until that day comes, you will do as I command. Ariel weighs him off and exits the room, leaving a seething, angry tiefling behind her. And as you continue to watch, Edgar, you see... So as you continue to watch, um, Corgan, you see knowledge just casually just kick a few things about before he sort of walks over to his... <clears throat> to his balcony and stares down at the menagerie and he can see uh, Ariel down there oaked, walking away with another individual who looks suspiciously like another, an oath swarm with that knowledge just spits on the ground 
first thing he does is he goes up to the broken anti-divination things, casts a spell, they fix themselves, and your vision is gone. Mm. It's never fun scrying on someone who's um, throwing a hissy fit. You kind of feel it a little bit. Get a bit of bile in your throat. But it would seem knowledge is working on something clearly to do with that little uh, theft of dwarven technology. Something to um, replace the failure as an actual intended result, I think. <clears throat> and he said something curious. He said about uh, Turiel um, ascending. And attaining godhood. Are they, are they trying to use Argoneth rather than summon him? That's what I'm starting to think. But we all know that if that were to ever happen, I assume Arkaneth would just <laughs> assume control, take over, and just be back to himself. Be an ant against an elephant. Yeah, but they are big-headed, cocky humans. No offense, right. Artie. No, I agree. Humans are big-headed and cocky. I am the greatest here amongst us. <laughs> I mean, you are when you're not su summoning Garistros to kill us, yeah. <laughs> I mean, there are still some Garistros. Still pretty impressive, yeah. <laughs> exactly, point proven. But, yeah, I think that's just a little bit more insight into the machinations. Edgar, not Edgar, sorry. Uh, Turiel wants an update as well, but uh, an update on said weapon, but... I <laughs> I'm gonna guess that there's probably gonna be, you know, anti divination up at that meeting. Yeah, I don't think we'll be able to square on that one very well. No. no. I'd and love to know what. It's not in danger. No. Um for some reason she was there um about uh, obtain so it seems she gets her supply of um scrying scrolls from knowledge, which you'd think she'd just maybe go to one of the lower um Arcanists, rather than you know the head for such a. Uh, but maybe that like would be. on him to confirm that he wouldn't title on her. Maybe. Maybe it would actually be more suspicious for the princess to go to anyone but the heads to ask I suppose. things. I suppose. Um, yeah, she was. That's that's kind of why she was there. They weren't in the uh, in the palace. They were in the menagerie, so it was a bit weird. Um, yeah. But uh, but she seems safe now. No, yes, no immediate she, danger, at least. No, she was being escorted away by one of the old sworn. Couldn't tell you which. Probably would end up being the. Um, oh bugger! I can't remember what's the dead one's name. George. 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 George that's the one. Thank you. Um, if I had to guess, I know. I think Bellius kept his hair kind of. Uh, out and allowed and proud and all that kind of thing, and the dwarf would obviously be much shorter and that kind of thing, so it seems they like to use George for the uh, errands. However, if didn't, wasn't there something about how the I can't remember the dwarf one's name pissed in front of the king? So he might not be an Oathsworn anymore. There no, that was, um, no, that, that was that was the yeah that, was, London, did that. yeah, that was the ambassador for uh, Philly Dozen. I get my dwarves mixed up all the time, you see. Yeah, they all look the same. <laughs> Apart from Corbin, he's only got half a beard, so you can keep him like separate from the rest. I gallop away at that mention. <laughs> I'm not getting involved in this shit. <laughs> I'll get you when you're sleeping, Ramus. <laughs> you think I sleep? I know you do. I've watched you sleep. One day I'll make sure That's it weird. stops. Corgrin, I'm the creepy Corgrin, one who wants to stop doing me. that. <sighs> right, okay. Should we go see what this big group of uh, 
Knights and Camp is, is all about then. See which side they're on. Yeah. Oh, Verity turns into a ghost. Or a goat. Yeah. That was more like a chair. <laughs> so, all <laughs> of you guys gallop. The very first sense of um, presence you find is a patrol of soldiers out in the wilderness, about six in total. But these soldiers are uniformed in the same type of... Well, they look like the same type of uniform of those soldiers that ambushed you on the road one time when you were going to go save Verity. And you beat the captain within an inch of his life and then sent him off with a message. Ah, so it's on Ogden's. This is Ogden's group. They haven't noticed you yet. Um, you, can, like, you can see them quite off, fair off into the distance. Would you still have some tree cover? I mean, it's six soldiers. I, I say we just ride past them. And if, if they try and stop us, it will be the last thing they ever do. Well, we, well I'm trying to remember the warning we actually gave to... Uh... <laughs> to the soldiers. I, I cannot remember. remember. Me neither. I mean, we could try and scare the bejeebus out of them. Yeah. Goristro? Well, I can't, like, choose when the Goristro appears. No. Oh. I could throw one of but... my cards. Well, I was just thinking I'd make, you know, scary, dark abyss tentacles pop out and just be all, like, covering with thaumaturgy, be all, like, this is flesh blue. I don't know. Or, or we could go around them. Yeah, I'm... for once, them with Rhianus. I mean, Vanessa's first thing was just to ignore them completely, but no, I mean, if we, if we want to just go around them and get to the camp, then we can do that. Okay. All right, can I get a survivor roll from the party then as you utilize the terrain to avoid um, any of Ogden's patrols. Look at Venas being a survivalist. Wow. I'm putting Ari to shame. <laughs> like, I was going to ask what the terrain is, but I imagine it's not forest. It is forest, yes. Oh, I'll get advantage then. Oh, even worse. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to go get a drink. <laughs> okay. I'll do the same. And that's why Ari failed the survival check because he was too busy getting a drink. <laughs> I'll oh, go get a drink as well then. With me, so. <laughs> One good thing about wireless headphones, I don't know how well you can hear me, mind. We can definitely hear you. Okay, well, I'm in my fridge. Um, actually, I'm going to make myself tea. Everyone the cameras, I feel so alone. Hey, we're still here. I know, but you're not on the camera. So it's just like I'm just looking at a bunch of empty chairs now. You saw my face on Saturday. You know what I look <laughs> like. <laughs> yeah. You Saturday. Eh? What did you do? Anything fun? No, I was working, and Rich and Ellie just appeared in my oh. show, and. As if by magic, like, um, you know, Mr. Ben style. I was like. very surprised, and I was very happy. That is cute. But I was very flustered, because obviously I was not prepared for guests, so I was very much like, ah! <laughs> we did, like, yeah. ambush you in the middle of work. <laughs> you went to where Georgia works? Yeah, we were in Birmingham for the day on Friday, <laughs> so we called in and said hello to George. Oh, that's nice. It was. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> huh. Thank you.
Na 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 na. Oh, I didn't realize I was to you. Sorry. It's quite okay. <laughs> it was fun. That's why I joined him. Mm -hmm. Ha ha. Just trying to think what I could do to make these gods regret any decisions to try and follow us. Ha. <laughs> I, I could show them my nice new dagger for, for, for very close up. I'm um I'm starting a new game as a player. I was about to say because you're not doing enough games already, but as a player, sounds good. Uh, um, Bi-weekly Fridays. Um, the world itself sounds interesting. Um, I did the session zero with the group. I can't say I vibed amazingly well with them, but. I'm willing. I'm pretty desperate, so I'm willing to give it a try. I'll probably last about three sessions before I realise how fucking bored I am. <laughs> but I'll give it me all, just like I did with the Ian campaign. The like, problem is, is, is that Ian campaigns was fucking boring. Exceptionally so. And the only thing that was worth watching in it was me. <laughs> like, fucking... Got... E We've got a few games. We're doing a so last I think it was last year we did the 24 hour stream for the uh, place in Bedford. Um, this year they're doing a 24 hour stream, but they're doing it split over the weekend. And so we are in the Friday, Saturday, and Sunday game. So we're doing the, we're going to try the Alien RPG, which looks quite good. We've got D and D on Saturday, and then possibly a drop in, drop out, one shot thing during the day. And then on Sunday it's uh, called Alas the Awful Sea. It's kind of a little bit more like um, Blades in the Dark. Um, and it looks really good. It looks quite interesting. So give it a go. See if I like it. Find some games for that. Hmm. That's pretty whoop, cool. Whoop. I, th I, like the I like Blades in the Dark. So I was thinking about possibly doing, running one of those at some point. Trying something different. Actually running something. I play three games at the moment. So I, I feel like I've, I'm probably... Enough for right now. Uh, what's that? I've I run five games now, and I'm contem I'm contemplating. I'm going to see if the Friday thing works out. I don't think it will, but if it doesn't work out, I'm contemplating starting another two paid games, on s one for Saturday overnight with Americans and one for Friday evenings for a UK audience. You away? You have to sleep at some point, Jack. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but I also have to provide for a family that uh, I can't provide for because I. Because wages are stagnating and we're going into a recession. The, the, yeah. yeah, the economy is going fucking nuts. But on to brighter topics. War! War. <laughs> huh. Money is in good, All right, so collectively together, you guys, especially with Rennes, uh, you guys are able to avoid uh, about a dozen or so more patrols. Um, and so eventually you come across the main encampment, and there are thousands of soldiers here. Um, they're mainly sort of hidden away in like outcroppings in the in in forests and such like that, but mainly just like camped up in the forest itself. Um, how would you like? To try and get a get through this, or would you want to go around this? Do you want to go through this? Do you want to disguise yourselves? Do you want to fight through it? Like, what do you want to do? See, in my head, if the people in the camp see us coming up, they'll assume <clears throat> that we've been stopped by one of the many patrols, and that we must be here for a reason. So we could just try and just like confidently walk through, like we're supposed to be here, heading straight for the center of the camp, where presumably the big head ha head honcho is going to be. I mean, we did also do that with the goblins, and it worked. <laughs> so, <laughs> sorry, the goblinoid alliance, and that was kind of what I had in mind as well. Of just, we're here to see a leader. <laughs> no harm or violence will will be wrought. We wish to discuss parley, <laughs> basically. Sounds like a plan to me. We need to stop Company agreeing. Here. It's getting it's getting weird. Okay. Verity, why the tentacles today? 
Have you been watching hentai? Like, haven't you? No, I'm, I'm sure more of a, a I'm more of a a, a doujin shi kind of guy. I I read the I read the the mangas. Ah, man of class. Exactly. <laughs> There's 2D and then there's 2D, 3D. I want my women 2D. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, you're going to try and just bluff your way past. Just walk like you belong. Yes. Yeah. So. All right, then. Can I get a group deception check, please? As you dismount, <laughs> you, you dismount your horses or do you go through on your horses? Are there lots of people on the ground on off of horses? Yeah. Yeah, they're barely any, like, there are horses like hooked up you know, to the outskirts of the camp, but pretty much everybody that you're about to walk through is not on horses. Yeah, maybe maybe tie the horses up and walk in. They're never getting these horses back. Hmm. I did click it. I'll oh, click oh, it again. Oh! oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> the fact that it's fire as a natural one. Uh. <laughs> I just find that hilarious. This is why I still have Renas roll for these skill checks. As if Renas can do a survival check but can't lie. I mean, let's be realistic here. <laughs> I just like to imagine you being questioned and just going, uh, 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 uh for like. 30 seconds, they're like, nah, these guys are fucking with us. Like, let's just get them, lads. <laughs> you know? Uh, let me um, roll for Russ, because this could... <laughs> oh, yeah. Wait, this could swing it. It's like the fucking the fucking meme. Hi, can I get a... Can I get a mommy milk? Mommy breast milk? Mommy breast milk? Sorry, breast milk. <laughs> what? It's, I, have you never seen that? Um... No! Jack, roll better. Mm. Just send the breast milk thing now. That's another natural one. <laughs> that is another natural one, yeah. <laughs> okay, so, Brennus and Russ. If there's one thing you guys know how to do, it's bullshit. So you get off your horses and together you walk up to them, going straight in up towards the large encampment, half hidden by the forest. <laughs> and you see the first two guys there they're just sort of like they're lazily you know guarding the outskirts of it one of them's like hanging on his shield the other one's just like up against a tree with a spear and they see you two come in and like <coughs> get the shield up the spear up and they just sort of pop up the pants goes where's that yeah but but, but just but i'm just like pointing Forward. All stuttering. Um Russ just goes, um, yeah, um, we need to um be in there. Do you now? Yes. And what do you need to be in there for? There's someone we need to see. Are we with no. Jack? No, the, the, the group's just behind them. Um, and uh, the guys are like, yeah, I bet there is. What a shout out. Oh, mention Ogden. See, that is something you need to leave with. That is somebody who clearly knows where they need to be. But you two. Come on, off you jog. Well, I mean, Ogden is someone. If there's someone we need to see, that someone happens to be Ogden. And if you needed to see him, you would have said so from the start, wouldn't you? Just like that lovely lady over there. Hi, you've got pretty lady. You've got pretty hair, by the way. Hi, thank you. Yeah, but you two, you know, jog on. I imagine that we're all just walking past them, like flashing imaginary like passes, you know, on the lanyard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just walks in. Like. Them. I like to imagine we're also being patted down, but there's obviously weapons all over us, and they're like, "Yeah, go on, yeah, go on." <laughs> the, 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 the only other two there are just sort of focusing on how poorly uh, skilled Russ and Renis are. Like, Corgi, you basically just sort of stick behind Verity and Ari and just like hope they don't. I like to imagine I'm in I'm in um, OT Shadow. 
and Ari yeah. is in my shadow. <laughs> <laughs> You're smaller than that me. badly. You're smaller than me, though. <laughs> as the uh, as as the guards just they deny entry to Rust and Venice. I think we walk like twenty meters around and then try again somewhere else. <laughs> You're still seen from. The... Don't let them in. Hey, <laughs> hey. They have no business in here. Don't let them in. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right. Sorry, right, you heard him. No business here. On you go. Ah, <sighs> this is this is very frustrating. I have no ID. Well, is, there, ID. Is, is there anything else you would like to try to get past these guards? Nothing that's going to end well. De Niro. That stealth. De Niro does work. So I'll go back to the first set of guards. Let's, let's just you know. Oh. Offer them a nice cookie. Come on, man. Um, look, Our job's not meant to be this busy. The, the person in there said that we need to give you this little pouch of gold. I'll pass over 50 gold. And that's how we get in. Oh, shit. Um, yeah, here you go. Yeah. Told you we were important. I don't care if you're important. You're fucking rich, mate. Here you go. Well, how do you think I got to be rich? By being important. And I'll just stroll past. Oh. I'm sure Fi would have probably done it, but hey. <laughs> so Renis and Russ rejoin the rest of the group as you guys walk through this camp like you belong. You get a few stairs. 50 gold lighter. <laughs> you get a few stairs. Um, a lot of people do recognize you. Like, um, are they? That, that's, that's definitely them, right? No, no. Keep walking. What are they doing here? Sort of thing. We're the Simpsons, um, not the Simpsons. <laughs> Eventually, you come to a palisaded place where there is an old abandoned tower uh, sort of half belt, uh, half collapsed downwards. There are a few buildings around here, like farmland buildings that have unfortunately been destroyed because of fighting and such. And if, uh, A number of trees around here have been cut down to basically make up the palisades and such, as well as some spare ones on the outside. And this place is probably the heaviest by far. Now, you, Verity, you would be able to fly up just to sort of scout the area and get a good view, and you can see there's a large tent, like an important person's tent, to the far left of the camp. You can also see where armed guards that are actually paying attention to what they're doing are sort of set up around. Are they around the whole tent, or are they just at the front of the entrance to the tent? Uh, well, you can see on the map. Ah, that's so we can. Oh, okay, so the whole pa palisade thing, fine. Okie doke. So you can see three entrances in there. They are all guarded at the moment. Um, you're currently held up inside one of those abandoned buildings, just sort of scoping the area out. Okay, so are we going to go loud, or are we going to go and just try and speak to Ogden? I mean, it's it's definitely something we need to do, perhaps. Or we could just, you know, make Ogden have a few less guards. What time of day is it? Uh, it's um, probably about 11 o'clock-ish, midday-ish. Still quite early in the day. Okay. I was going to say, if it was getting to dusk or something, I'd pass without trace, but pass without trace. I don't imagine works on... Uh... Just brazenly walking in the front door. It reduces your sound. I mean, we could make our way all the way around through the tree line, all the way around the back, and try and, like, come over the fence around here somewhere. Yep, because you've got a great history of climbing. Mm. I look very offended. <laughs> and we got a dwarf with us. I'd just probably, at this point, I'd probably just lift the fence and go underneath. Me, 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 me. I'm all strong. I've got a new belt. What was that? The fact that you guys are also legendary heroes, some of the most skilled warriors in the entire land, might all have something to do with it as well. Like, we could just try walking through the front door again. Like, yeah, I, I just like... One. Even if we recognise, just look, we're here to see Ogden. 
if you recognise us, you know you don't want to stand in between us and Ogden. If you don't, then you've got no reason not to let us in because we're not dangerous. That's exactly what I would have said to those last guards, Renis. Yeah, I got a little bit flustered. It won't happen again. <clears throat> Famous last words. Oh, God. He's chicked it forever. Yep. Just to check, is each of these markers like one guard or a patrol of they guards? Are, they are one guard, but there are others around that aren't paying attention, that gotcha. are relaxing. So those are the ones you have to sort of be aware of. Okay. I know it's going to sound really stupid, but should we not try and get ourselves caught so we can go and see Ogden? Would that not be a plan potential? I mean, they'd have to be pretty stupid to capture some of the most powerful people in the land right now and take them immediately to their boss. But women are most powerful, one of the most powerful people's, people's in the world. Like, what? Words? Words? <laughs> we're some of the most powerful people in the world. He's the, We're not going to want to sit in a fucking cage. They're going to want to take us to their leader. I see. I see. We try. If they want to arrest us, then we let them. Okay. So we try and talk our way in. If they try and arrest us, they arrest us and take us in and we get what we want anyway. Assuming they take us in and don't take us to a different camp, in which case we resist. That we, re- we must do parlay and request that we seek to the leader. Yes. Indeed, parlay. Indeed. I have a jar of dirt. Okay. So Why? So, <laughs> roll up to the gate and tell them we want to see Ogden? Yeah. Okay. So, you all march out of the abandoned house and walk straight up to the nearest bunch of gate guards who stand to attention as you come through and then their faces of recognition once again come over and just go oh 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 um oh uh, ring the bell ring the bell we're here to see ogden there's no need to ring the bell we'll, we'll just let him know that we're here we just want a conversation make a persuasion roll we we've just come the whole way through your camp we wouldn't be here if we were dangerous Don't roll a one. Fuck me! Oh my god. Oh my god. I it's was just to add, there would be a lot more dead. Coming to attack! Ring the bell! Um, and one of them could just like runs over down, just goes ding 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 ding. Like, like, so as a reaction, as he runs towards the bell, plus three dagger tossed from my wrist. To who? The, the, the one running or... for the bell. Um, you can't really. Throw things as a reaction, unfortunately. Oh, uh, well, worth a try. Well, uh, guess we're fucking fighting our way through but, these cunts. Well, it, was, it was basically a case of um, he was already going for it when you were talking and yeah. you were convincing him to stop. So um, they immediately, like, you can see they shakily and like scared. They're, they're scared of you. They, they draw their weapons. You can see more come out of the encampments and they like. And people like around us sort of get up and stand around and begin to surround you. And the one who you initially talked to goes, "Lay down your weapons and surrender." Uh, and just how likely do you think that is? Not here to fight. Why did you have to call him a cunt? Why did you have? Why? Why did you have to say when we're going to see going to see Ogden? Why did you have to call him a cunt? Why, but because he rang the bell and now my ears hurt. Fuck's sake! Take us to Ogden. Drop your weapons now. Take us to Ogden! We're not going to do that. Our hands are up. That's about as good as you're going to get, pal. Mm -hmm. Uh, Take us to your leader! My my dagger is sheathed and not in your throat. Call it a win. Look, magic. I don't need weapons. The the gate guards are looking at each other. The soldiers are looking at each other. They're all scared. And then one of them just goes, Wait here. I'll go get the advisor. Yeah. You you do that. I swear uh-huh. to God, if he comes out, he is getting stabbed. <laughs> Fucking immediately. No bullshit, I've had it with this guy. <laughs> just, just want to stop threatening the guards in front of the other no, guards, no, no, mate. I'm not threatening the guards. This is me, my internal monologue. <laughs> and if, if who I'm expecting walks through this fucking gate right now, I am going to attack him. Oh, I, I, I didn't click until oh, just Jack, then. No, please don't! <laughs> I get the advisor. <laughs> It's not Bunyan. Like, oh. Fuck for that. <laughs> You're going to have a riot in our house, all right? You nearly I, made a riot. I was thinking for... He was... I, uh, 
No, it's not Bunyan B. It would have been brilliant if it was. Oh, worked. shit, Bunyan's working for us now, isn't he? I completely yeah. forgot that. <laughs> I would not expect him not to come out. Brilliant, <laughs> it's just Bunyan with a moustache. It's This is Dunyan. <laughs> Okay. But I reckon um, if we hadn't recruited Bunyan, this is where he would have been. Yeah, fair. <laughs> oh, dear. Um, okay, so after about a minute or so... Yeah. You see the same gate guard coming towards you again. And... Corgrin is eating snacks while waiting, by the way. This, <laughs> this is me and Corgrin. Oh, yeah, we're, like, on the floor, like, sitting down, like, come by our. We're just quite happily sitting there waiting for Ogden. You see an individual coming towards you. This man has got a very strange outfit about him. He's got a kind of a black overcoat sort of thing, like... Um, a sort of a blackish blow tie with a white undershirt. Um, he's got a pipe that he's holding in one hand. Uh, he's got exceptionally large ginger, kind of like mutton chop beard sort of thing. Very combed hair and a monocle. Why are you just describing my manager in work? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. He <laughs> yeah. Walks bit, the monocle. Um, yeah. <laughs> he walks a bit poncily. To be honest, yeah. <laughs> um, yeah and it's it's weird weird now. <laughs> it's eventually he comes to the cusp of the gate and sees you all. He stares around a little bit. He says, "By Jove, what are you all doing? Glow your weapons! Do you have any idea what these people can do to you?" And they're like, "Ah, oh, but they're, they're 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 going. They're here to kill." The commander, sir, if they have come here to talk, if they come here to fight, we'd be dead already. Lower your weapons now! And the guards, like, she begin to sheath their weapons and lower them and, like, the guy adjusts his, his bow tie over and says, I do apologize for that little mix up. Um, may I welcome you to Councilman Ogden's camp? Uh, my name is the advisor, Darlington. Darlington. Yes. I work as an assistant uh, advisor for Councilman Ogden here. I'd like to say you're a very wise man. You're completely correct. We came here to talk, and your reasoning is very sound. I'd oh, like that's to... Wild. Wonderful news. Insight him, please. Yeah, go right ahead. I was going to say, is there a... If, could I do, like, a visual sweep to see if there's anything of like lordship or like political importance about this dude yeah go right ahead so specifically what i'm inciting is is there more to him than meets the eye like he recognized us and he isn't pissing himself like these guards so <clears throat> that makes me think he is aware of who we are has an idea of what we can do and maybe isn't that um bad at whatever he can do himself. Okay, so Verity, the way he carries himself, he certainly thinks of himself very important, at least important enough to speak for Ogden. So that maybe there's a hint of maybe the nobility in there. Maybe he has, maybe he's a cousin of a noble or something like that. Um, Corgrin, this guy is quite charismatic and he's hard point in that regard but you're trying to see through his social graces um but either he's just either he's completely straightforward or he's able to keep up um his social mask to the point where you are unable to pinpoint exactly his intentions hmm I would like to keep a close eye on Darlington, please. Okay. Well, as a representative of Councilman Ogden, I would very much like to welcome you to our camp. And uh, <coughs> once again, I would like to thank you very much that you're not slaughtering us all. <laughs> now, I, I specifically do not laugh with him. 
uh, was, uh, uh, seeing as how you've obviously come here uh, to talk, uh, might I inquire of the nature of the topic you wish to talk about? Uh, Ogden's immediate and unconditional surrender? Uh, for what reason? Just wishful thinking, I guess. We just want to know why he's here. Like we literally, last time we saw him, my friend Ari here had a l- lovely chat. He agreed to help us out. Everything was going fine, and now we- we've gone away for a few weeks. And now there's this big civil war going. You were the biggest camp, so we came to you first. We just want to find out what's going on. Well, um, <sighs> the fact of the matter is, Councilman Ogden has raised his bannerman and his forces under the threat of being attacked by Councilman Haftre and Councilwoman Beatrice. He is simply defending himself from their recent military excursions. And why, pray tell, are they raising military excursions against the good councilman? Well, in all good purposes, it was uh, councilman. I look round for the council. Uh, there's no other councilman here that you can see. I know, but Corbin um, said the good councilman, so I'm looking round for the one. <laughs> Um, Councilman Halftray, not but a month or so ago, began raising his own particular bannermen in preparation for a military, uh, battle. Um, well, Councilman Beatrice saw, that, uh, saw this as a threat and began raising her own forces, but realised that hers was not of significant portion, so began pilfering and, and or plundering forces uh, that rightly belonged to Councilman Ogden as one of the most esteemed members of the British Council. Uh, and when requested that they cease and desist this actions, uh, they refused, and in fact got rather violent about it. So Councilman Ogden has raised his own uh, in defence of his lands and his property. Sounds very sensible. Might we uh, discuss the matter with the, the good Councilman? So long as I have your assurances that you mean absolutely no harm at all. Look around. Yeah, I think you have them. Right. Can I just confirm as a DM? Is that the truth? Yeah. Like, no harm intended. Like, unless he gives reason. There's no is there any character reason. here who intends to harm him regardless of what happens? Is what I want to know. Not regardless of what happens, but at the same time, I wouldn't guarantee his safety regardless of what happens either. So I, I, I am not coming in here with the intention of harming him. In fact, you know, do you know what? Fuck it. I keep fucking things up for the party. I will not harm him. Okay. All right, then I don't require like, any deception checks from people then. I may make him recall the last time he saw me, but other than that, I intend him yeah. no harm. Pretty psychological. So, <laughs> so uh, Darlington um, nods with a bit of a belly laugh. <laughs> well, um, I, fa- I firmly believe you are you're men and women and individuals of honour and code and integrity, and we'd be more than happy to uh, accept you into our camp uh, to begin the negotiation process. <clears throat> You're too kind, thank you. Absolutely. Now, if you'd like to come with... Oh! Oh! It, the moment he turns around, he went face first into um, the, the side of the, bar- of the, of the palisade. Um, you get the thing, his situation awareness is like completely zero. Oh! Goodness gracious me. My apologies, man. Uh, this way. I let the party know that he is so incredibly charismatic that I cannot read him. I cannot. I was going to say as well, like, um, when out of earshot, this individual, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. where it's like, he seems to be acting a little bit more important or nobler than he sh- he probably is. So if you do need to, like, flatter him or anything, you know. Well, from what we know of Ogden, he, he's more of an <clears throat> order follower than an order giver. So it's, it's very possible this guy is really the secret power and he's just okay. letting Ogden be the figurehead. Verity, did you say flatten or flatter? Sorry. Flatter. Like, you know, flatter him, like, if we wanted to manipulate him in any way in terms of conversation. Oh, wow, you're so regal. Oh, yeah, you seem so important. What wise choices you seem to make. I get a little note book out and I make comments and make notes of those words because I'm going to forget them otherwise. 
plus sometimes flattering can lead to flattening. <laughs> okay. So Darlington leads you in there. Up into the main tent itself. He opens the tent out for each of you um, to allow you to go in one by one. The tent inside is quite luxurious. Um, lots of cushions around and like odd bits of gold here and there and jewelry and the like. And inside there are a couple of um like a couple of officers um with Ogden's men's uniform. Um and there is Ogden himself, the pale faced, grey haired or graying haired individual, <coughs> skinny, just shifty looking all around. Um, and he immediately just, like, squirrels upwards and is just like, <gasps> as Darlington posts his face, it's absolutely fine, Ogden, they've come here to talk, negotiate. They've not come here to re seek retribution about your allegiances. Um, uh, um, would you like to have a seat? I, I sit down on the cushion that is near some of the jewellery that's scattered about. Yeah. Orti, do you think... Do, do you want to sit right next to uh, next to the good councilman? Or, do you, or Ari, do you want to? Um, Ogden is staring at you, Ari, as you sit down next to him. Wait. Oh. You're certainly looking a lot more free than the last time I saw you. <laughs> what have you... Come sit next to me. Uh, <laughs> make, an, make an intimidation check at advantage. Yeah, okay. And he slowly sits down next to you, arms on his knees, just staring ahead. <laughs> I do not know what's going on and I want to sit and watch the entertainment so I'm going to sit next to him on the other side So how have you been? Busy And who helped you escape? The boss of the snake place uh, I did ask him to let you go after a while I'm glad that he did But did you have fun? Um, um, that's a subjective term. I'm sure we're going to have very many good times together in the future as I pat his knee and, like, kind of <laughs> pat his hand at the same time. <laughs> but, yeah, we're going to stop this petty little feud that you've got going on between all three of you, aren't we? Petty? No, 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 no. I am... Simply doing my duty, uh, king and country. What you are doing is protecting your own pathetic little plot of land when you could be joining forces and helping me and my friends. Well, and then you might get a bigger plot of land when all this is over. I mean, if that's the term of the negotiation, I'm, I'm, I'm more than happy to... N negotiate with you, but um, I, I, I can't commit to anything at the moment. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm not in the best of positions to make <clears throat> decisions. Um, you don't actually have any real power, and you need to speak to the people who pull all your strings. Uh, how dare you? I am in complete control here. Tell him, Darlington. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh, we all listen to Councilman Ogden. He's a fine man of, of noble repute. Again, I, I nod as if it's too. the most obvious. That, yes, of course, of course. And Love he's it. in your little ear, <clears throat> little oggy, as I like, kind of tug slightly on his earlobe. Um, no, I am simply defending my rights and my territories from the power-hungry Beatrice and the foolhardy Haftre. Uh, they are the ones that have... Haftre is the one who started with this. I am simply... Responding and protecting myself. Really? Are I'm you sorry, sure? He started, he started this how? By getting arms that were probably in efforts to help us. And then you guys took that as a personal threat? I mean, that feels very... 
you know, bizarre <clears throat> quest to begin with. Well, if if Half Trey did not intend military action against us, then why does he attack my convoys and my patrols? I guess he convoys, probably because you're attacking his. Also, I am retaliating. I am retaliating against the man. Just as a quick question, are your convoys by chance going to the capital? No, they're going to my men. Ah, uh, okay, fair enough. Okay. Uh, I, 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 I host the largest army on this field. Question. You do. Who is it that's telling you it's Mastray's people attacking your convoys? By men. You're a man who work for you and not... Like, these are the king's men, aren't they? I have side with the king because there is no other way to survive this current crisis. Okay, so... Bear with me, Arkton. I'm the king and I want lots of power, but these darn rebels are getting in my way. Maybe I could shorten their forces if I can get this whole group of people to fight with each other instead of against me. That would be great. So I will help one of them by convincing them to fight the others and using my men to do my bidding without his knowledge. Could you see how this scenario could be happening for you, Ogden? No, because I'm the one that makes all the decisions. Mm. I mean, this conversation's going to take twice as long if you just carry on lying about everything, Ogden. And where did you come from, Darlington? Oh, I was personally chosen by Helsman Ogden here for my sound advice and military strategy. That's an insight. Go right ahead. Oh, oh, oh a spicy meatball. You know his personal address. <laughs> I've got his fucking national insurance number on the back of my hand. <clears throat> Darlington You do not detect a lie when he says that Ogden selected him to be an advisor. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> However, during throughout this entire conversation, Darlington has been listening very intently, more than what maybe uh, an advisor would, and you get the feeling that there is maybe a little bit of strain in his composure in regards to um, in regards to when the subject that came out that somebody might be uh forcing these people to fight against each other, that that was the part you noticed where his composure slipped a little. So when it was suggested that, when Verity suggested that the civil war was just a means of distracting a larger force instead yeah. of uniting the infighting, he, he kind of had a yeah, twitchy, right. twitchy moment. Yeah. Sort of thing. Mm. Hmm. But now, how to get the coward to see that? Well, I just want to make, outside of character, I just want to make Darlington snap. You know, he's clearly the, the orchestrator. Uh, I might be able to help with this. So, for less in... flattery, more insults. So, so back in character, um, mm -hmm. I'm going to say, well, if we can get everyone to stop attacking each other, do you think you could have a sit-down conversation with everyone? Well, of course, you could ask, you know, let's, let's, the let's power look. hungry Beatrice and... I, the... I am not comfortable speaking with them as it, things stand. You want me to come to negotiation tables, then you're going to have to do a few things for me. You're going to have to even the playing field a little bit. Make me feel comfortable with being on them. Even the playing field, you say. But you have the biggest army, so you want us to come and kill some of your army? Make things fairer? My army is mainly made of conscripts. They are men who have not seen true battle so far. They have something that many 
do not, and that is loyalty to their lord. <clears throat> However, Hafre, his army is professional. He's equipped them with officers from the last war, trained his men. And Beatrice is well-funded enough and skilled enough in the arcane arts that she's been able to equip what few men she has with superior arms and armor. Either way, the things, if they work together as they have been, I don't have, a, I don't have an equal say in this. I'd like to kind of acknowledge everything that Ogden just said, and then very obviously turn my head to Darlington, just look him dead in the eye, and just say, and what would it take for you to come to the table, Darlington? For me, I'll send me my, my lord's command. So will you be commanding your lord to command you to come to the table? I'm... I'm... <laughs> I have to apologize. I think there may be a mis mis misconception now. I do have no commanding or any sort. I simply mm. advise. You can advise. True. But I get the feeling that's because you're the one that's actually giving the advice rather than it's being requested of you. Are you catching what I'm picking down, Darlington? If Councilman Ogden wishes to heed my advice, then that's his prerogative to do so. Ogden, has there been plenty... There have been times where you have not heeded my advice. Isn't that correct? Yes. And what happens in those times where you did not heed my advice? The situation got worse. Yes. This is why Ogden was wisely chosen to listen to my advice. Funny, it's almost as if perhaps the person giving the advice is actually orchestrating those events to oh. happen because you didn't follow Darlington's advice. Well, 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 I, 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 I can see how that would happen, Corgo. That, that makes a lot of sense. I want you mm. to... to let, well, let us take a step back. Ogden has been here since he came... He arrived after this infighting began. Yeah, that didn't, done... that didn't mean he didn't have a hand in starting it, Darlington? I was the one that raised my forces in response to what Haftre and Beatrice have done. He is simply an advisor. He is a friend of the family. I have known him for 15 years. I trust his advice. Uh. Question. Can I do an insight on Ogden to see if he might be under some sort of charm? <laughs> like... Yeah, go right ahead. You get the feeling, Verity, that his words come from a come from an actual sense of honesty. Mm -hmm. Like he doesn't actually believe the words that are being said, um, and he he's he's intelligent enough to get what you're getting at. That he's in the process of trying to convince you that doesn't appear to be the case. Mm. So, go on. In order for us to get all three of yourself, Beatrix, no, Beatrice, Beatrice and Haftry to sit down, you want no armies, you want some armies. What, what exactly what are I, you after? Here's what I want you to do. I want you... To get their assurances that they will come to the table, but I want to go to that table with an equal sense to make sure that my men won't be ambushed. So I'm going to require you to even the playing field. I want you to find Beatrice's supply of components and either destroy them or taint them. Make sure that she just can't use them anymore for her powerful magics. Also, half trace got a relatively large reserve of grain. A grain silo outside of his camp. Burn that down to demoralize his professionalized soldiers. So should they, should they attack, my men have a better chance to defend themselves. But, but, yeah, no, we're not doing your work for you. You must understand that our goal would be to unite you all, to have you all, you know, as one army. And therefore, hurting parts of that army is very counterintuitive to our end goal. The Ultimate Ogden has given you... Shut up, Darlington! Surprise. Don't want to hear from you! 
How rude. Just glare. Stop talking. Mm. Adults are talking. Ogden, you know who we are. You know what we need from this. And you know that in this situation, you are the biggest thing standing in the way. Now, if you prefer, and you don't want to come to the table, and you don't want to have an honest conversation where every single party involved will stand to benefit once this is all over, that is fine. I am more than happy to come back at a later time, like, say, at night, when you're sleeping, and we'll have a very different discussion. Intimidation check. All I want is a nice, honest conversation. Between equals, we can all see where it goes. Why can't we solve this violence without violence as he stabs the table? (laughs) At least it wasn't a one. Ogden is clearly sweating. He is clearly very intimidated of all of you, especially Ari. I assume it has been slowly just fondling with a knife and some rope, her fingers... Just casually brushing up against Agden. They're kind of like leaning arms. back, kind of got my arm around the back of his, like a back of him, not quite touching him, but I'm there so he can like feel the presence. And I've got one of my new daggers and I'm spinning it around <laughs> in my fingers. Just like, smiling away. I'm aware that comes off as quite threatening. It's genuinely not meant to be. It's meant to be persuasive. I genuinely want all three of you to sit around a table, just you three, no outside influence, and I just look up. No outside influences, and you three can discuss how best to end this this pointless little skirmish. I mean, there are serious things going on in the world. There's demons being summoned. There's, like, the, the dragons are fucking here. There's a whole horde of white dragons up in the north. Everything is going to shit, and you three are sat here squabbling over a fucking piss-pot town like Brian. I love Brian, but let's be fair, it's not worth getting this worked up over. Then tell that to Beatrice and half and we will happily do so, but before we leave here, we would like your assurances that you will come to the table and speak to them if they are willing to do the same. It will be on your own, with no other guards, no danger to any three of you. Us us here will stand to protect all three of you, and all three of you will arrive at that meeting and leave from that meeting. That is my word, as the most honourable person here. <coughs> Ogden thinks about this for a minute. I want to see how many times he looks at um, Darlington. A couple, couple of times. And how does Darlington react? Uh, Darlington's just got a blank face and is just looking around the room, really. Okay. He's a little intimidated by OT. That's kind of what I was going for. Nice. <clears throat> Ogden eventually says... So you need me and my men to fight your war against the king. This same king who has got scores of dragons and demons and all kinds of other powerful creatures at his side. Yes, but we have us. And also we've got our own forces. Duh. But apparently you need mine. Well, I see it. The, the way I see it, I don't need yours. You, you're trying to convince me that I want yours. It's a valid deal. I won't lie. I'll put it this way, Augie. It's more that we don't want to have to kill you. It, it, we exactly. like Brian. We love Brian. You we kill want to me. See... I don't want you to kill me. You. Then this entire army becomes leaderless. Yeah, we're, we're on about if you join the other side. I'm not going to kill you now. I have no interest in killing you. I'm on about if you join join with us, we will be forced to kill you. We want you to fight with us so that we can save Brian. So that well, we if can you want have... me on your side, then I need to approach these negotiations with a surety that my men are not going to be ambushed. What I am simply asking you to do is to lower... The battle readiness or ambush ability ca- or capabilities of my opposing forces. So I'm not how asking about, you to kill their men. I'm not asking about, you to destroy it all. How about 
what we do is that because there's six of us, we'll all go around, and when we've got you all to agree to negotiations, each of you will have two of your us escort you to an agreed point. And you don't have to have her. Mm. Gesture to Ari. <clears throat> no, I'll I'll go with someone else. Like as will I. I that makes you feel better. I, I'm pretty certain Halftree and Beatrice both fucking hate me too. But you know, Beatrice should like me. I didn't say that out loud. I'm just thinking that. Here's the situation as I see it. You need me. You don't want to have any more conflict amongst the factions here. I respect that. I agree with that. It's it's not nice having to fight your kinsmen. But at the end of the day, there is a fight happening. There is people being killed every day because of the actions of those two. You can try to spin it however you want, but at the end of the day, I have lost men, and I will continue to lose men. <clears throat> and I refuse to go to negotiations unless I know that my men can protect themselves from any trickery from the other two. May I make a proposal, Ogden? If we can't guarantee you these things that you've requested, which we most likely won't, would you at least agree to participate in a ceasefire while we work on these negotiations, while we travel between the camps, getting things a bit more agreeable? I promise to protect my own borders. That's not what a ceasefire means, Ogden. You get those other two to stop crossing over into my land, and there'll stop being some fighting between us. I can promise you I will not send any more excursions into their land. That's a good start. That's a good start. I'll take that. Thank you. Thank you for compromising. If you're going to their camps, then you know my terms. If you want me to approach these negotiations, you destroy Beatrice's supply of components, Mm -hmm. and you burn down Hattery's reserve of grain. Mm -hmm. Between Hattery and Beatrice... Who is causing the most uh, damage to your forces? They are equally doing so. The only thing I have working on me is that I have got more men on my side. And I'm pretty sure that if we'd gone to the, one of the other two first and they'd asked us to kill a portion of your men to equal the playing grounds, you'd be turning over right now. You'd be disgusted. So let us go and speak with them. That's all we can do right now. Speak with them and try and arrange for everyone to stop killing each other and then sit down and coordinate. That's all. Even if you don't join us, coordination is all we're asking for. I would like OT. Brennus Cor- and Corgrin to make persuasion rolls, please. I mean, that's a fucking two. I am getting <laughs> pissed off with my bullshit rolls. <laughs> this is fucking ridiculous. <laughs> a two, a one, and a fucking three. Uh... See. I don't understand why we're all trying to convince this guy about the lies of Darlington. And I'm just starting to turn my head slowly from Ogden to Darlington. I mean, you know the truth, don't you? Um, he's elaborate. Darlington, you're not an idiot. I would have not thought so. I was educated. So don't start treating us like idiots. I did not You're intend manipulating to. Ogden with fear. Using your knowledge of his plans to crush his efforts and his self-worth. It's truly pathetic that this is the only kind of person you can manipulate, because none of us else in here are fooled. I... You'd like to think you're something greater That's than you are, out but... laughing. <laughs> I don't understand where these accusations are coming from. I have treated you with nothing but civility and admirality. 
And so has every other noble that's tried to stick their nose up anyone else's ass. It doesn't prove her point wrong at all. It's just, you know. You can be civil whilst trying to stab someone else in the back. Like, it's pretty much Renis' speciality here. Oh, Excuse my me, how goddamn dare you? I am never civil, thank you very much. You okay. try. That was the emphasis in that statement for you. Well then, my lady, may I inquire as to what I, what I gain out of all of this? I'm what you gain? Whatever the king's paying, so, I imagine. I, he doesn't even need to be paying this man. He's so desperate for any sign of respect that he'll probably just do this all in the king's promise, air quotes, to give him some sort of status. If Kalsman wishes to no longer follow the king, then I shall follow right beside him. I don't know where this notion of that I am the mastermind here. I am simply a <laughs> but mastermind's a bit strong. I said you were pulling Ogden strings. I mean, you know, let's, let's not go mastermind here. I was going to say, it's hardly any skill to be able to manipulate a man who is so obviously broken. As I said, none of us here are really fooled. You've been told what to do by the mastermind, and you are charming enough and polite enough and well-dressed enough to get away with it. Well, I think It's you for really the quite words. funny, honestly. <laughs> I mean, if Beatrice was to see you now, she would be laughing her ass off. Well. Not that you care for her opinion, because she's against the king, and the king is always right. Because I'm a good boy who listens to my master. Well, well I... <laughs> I apologize if you feel that way. I just want to know when you're going to stop lying to this poor man. I'm not lying. I'm advising. But when you will stop advising him into making poor-ass decisions and manipulating his men into making him think like he's doing poor-ass decisions. I'm, I'm sorry. I don't have to sit here and listen to this slander anymore. No, you, them, you can leave. Feel free to leave. Forever. We'll talk to him without you. Ogden, may I be excused from this meeting? I'm afraid I feel a little bit flustered. Uh, yes, Og go, Darlington. That's, that's fine. I've never been more ruffled in my life. And oh. as he walks out, Give it he, time. Uh, I'll see wait, you again quickly, tomorrow. quickly, Jack. As he's walking yeah? out, um, can I like make Toby appear like just like hidden on him? I don't want him to notice Toby just kind of what like... Form like is, what form is Toby at the moment? He's in a spider. Because I had him creeping into the place in Jurassic or whatever. Beast hall in Bound. Yeah. I just want like Toby to appear and just kind of like be inside like his coat or something. Like Make a, um, make a sleight of hand check, please. Okay, I might use luck, so don't tell me the result. I'd, I'd like to out of character worship Verity right now, because that's an awesome move that I hadn't considered at all. <laughs> Really okay, well I'm going to use luck on that. Okay. Better. <clears throat> okay. So, Toby appears on the back of his clothes boom, as he walks out. He, uh, as he gets close towards the door, um, his leg hits uh, one of the uh, sort of chairs there. And he ends up stumbling and falling over <laughs> onto his back. Oh, oh, oh goodness Toby gracious. uses his chance to, like, you know, just get somewhere closer within him. It is quick enough that Toby, unfortunately, was crushed. Oh. God damn it! I want you to make an insight check, please, Verity. <sighs> that was intentional. I mean, you're a poor actor on top of everything else. I can't believe this. Uh, goodness question. I, I'm, I've had enough of this. I'm going. I'm goodbye. He, he walks out. Oh wait, Darlington! I forgot to say, you have a very nice moustache. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, very kind of you. Goodbye. I like nudge Verity. See flattery. Take the piss out of for 20 minutes and then say he's got a nice response. I don't know the plan! <laughs> so that leaves you guys, a few guards and Ogden uh, alone in the tent. Oh, God. I don't know what makes me more angry about this situation. 
the fact that he thinks he's above lying to us or you Ogden are actually believing him in all of this like it's it's astounding it's stupid and why should I you believe you? You are all you? literally fighting each other for no reason at the end of the day. I wouldn't even be surprised if Haftree didn't even start off gathering an army. And that someone just <clears throat> made you believe he did. And why like, should that I would believe not me. That fact would not blow my mind at all at this point. And once again, I refer to my previous answer of why should I believe you? Why should I believe any of you? This one here has been trying to stab me this entire time. It's because Is it just me? No, like in a twisted okay. kind of way. It's like it's weird. So I'd I'd like to just toss a dagger right at his feet or just right in front of him. Oh. And say, that's why you should believe us, because if we wanted you dead, you'd be dead. We've come here to try and talk to you, to try and come to a peaceful resolution between all three of you, and all you're doing is asking us to sabotage people who we want you to work with. Why would we want to sabotage them? We want you all to be strong and united. I am. I am. I am. As long as my position is held safe, I shall consider the side I'm on. You are clearly not going to listen to what we have to say. So I would ask that you give us 24 hours without going on the other side. Let us see what we can do with those two. Because maybe between them, they might have a brain cell because you're clearly lacking some of yours. They mm -hmm. might okay. take their forces elsewhere to help us out in this fucking war that is draining. And if you don't want to help us, you can sit here on your fucking land, but this will be remembered. And just like, just give it a nice, long, hard think, Ogden. Without Darlington in the room, just think about the sequence of events from the beginning till now. Like, how much it always seems to go in his favour. You have a plan, it goes wrong. But Darlington's plans never go wrong. No one is that skilled. I fuck up. He fucks up, I say, pointing to Corgan. I mean, look what happened to his beard. Why? I'm trying to prove a point here. I don't want to Why? be treating you like an idiot. But when we first encountered you, we were obviously in a place where we had no reputation and anything of the sort of like that. Okay? Just consider the sequence of events. You have 24 hours to get them to come to the negotiation table. At the end of those 24 hours, I will resume military operations against them. <sighs> I refuse to be. I refuse to let my lands and my titles be taken away from me, regardless of who it is. So you have 24 hours. I will grant you your request. Go and speak with them. See if they will come to the table. Okay, but if they tell stories, are they suspiciously. Similar to the perspective of yours, i.e. they were setting up armies first and we retaliated. I am not going to be surprised. I'm going to just take his hand and say thank you. He does you. withdraw his hand like he doesn't want to touch you. Thank you. I'll, I'll still offer a hand and say, just say to him, thank you for giving this, us this opportunity. Please think about what we've said. Take away what you think is relevant. And I will hope to see you again in a friendly manner within 24 hours to get this resolved. If you can end a war in 24 hours, then I'll find religion. Why not? Might I suggest Moradin? All father, incredible man. He never stops fucking talking about him. <laughs> Which also isn't actually true at all, but hey. <laughs> Your dwarvish ways aren't for me.
I'll go and pick up the dagger that I tossed at his feet and just say, I know I'll come across as a dick, but I'm really just trying to make a point. We don't want you dead. Think about it. You don't want me dead and you have to threaten me four times in this meeting. Interesting. Yes, but I have not killed you. Do you see the difference? Come on, Renas. <laughs> I'm being dragged down by so like, Stop talking, Renas. Let's go. I, I just like, like threat, reaching for that. Just back in the jump. With that, <clears throat> guys, walk out of the tents. Arlington is out there pouting. I no. want to get one final kind of look at, um, like, solid read on Darlington. Um, like, does he have any... He might be keeping it concealed, but does he have, like, any kind of spell focus, perhaps? Or anything that's like, oh, that kind of stands out on, you know, an old, large, noble... Make an arcana <laughs> check, but utilize uh. your wisdom modifier. So that will basically just be a d20 plus 3, okay. <coughs> 18. It ain't getting higher than a, a 23. You can't see anything that would assemble a magical focus on him. As I spot him whilst leaving the tent, I say loud enough for Ogden to hear. So not fully left the conversation then, eh? Honestly. I'd, I'd like to approach Darlington. And I'd just like to... If I go to lean close, will he pull back? Will he Will he react? Yeah. Is it I, 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 I just want to like whisper something quietly in his ear. So I'm just like leaning around and saying, you made us promise not to attack Ogden. But you said nothing about you. I'm just, just trying to gauge his reaction to that. Make an insight check. Ah, yes, insight. I've mm. been rolling so well, so this minus one should should go really, really well. <laughs> <laughs> There's literally three out of fucking four rolls. Um, so he just goes, oh, uh, uh, no, 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 no violence, no violence, no, 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 stay up later. Uh, we're, we're civil gentlemen here. We're, uh, 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 do I have to call the guards? And I walk away, annoyed okay. at my shitty luck. I, I was very tempted to try and stab him just to see what happened, but <laughs> not after my nat one. <laughs> Darlington, I like your buttons. Oh, well, thank you, madam. Just walk away. I don't listen. I got told to be flattering. No one told me when to be flattering. OT, when I stop being flattering, it's usually a good sign to stop being flattering yourself. Wait, you weren't being flattering throughout that? No, I was being devastating! So, In the smoky, noble stuff. kind of way! As you all leave... I do, but I'm really tempted to sneak back tonight. <laughs> as you all leave to go on to the next camp, either Beatrice or Haftre is your next target. Try and get them to come to a negotiation table to end this infighting between the Brinnick Coalition. Ogden remains inside his tent, sweating like hell. Oh, could Corgi do a scry like 10 minutes after we leave? If he wants to, but... <laughs> As Ogden is inside his tent, sweating, twiddling with his thumbs, I am... I don't know if I can do this. I... I tried my best. I hope the king recognizes that I am trying my best. None of my men here could capture them. I know they are the most wanted people in the entire land. There is nothing I could have done. My men are simply conscripts. There are no warriors here. I am not a warrior. 
You can't hold me accountable for that. I survived the situation. Barely. Surely the king can't hold this against me. You... You think there will be punishment? Probably not, but... I'll go speak with the other two, just in case. And that's where we'll end tonight's session, guys.